everybody is ready, I am also ready. Sweet. All right. Well, I'm going to do a fun thing and move you over to a different page immediately in Roll20 because I like this page better. This is just going to be a backdrop. Nothing actually happens on this page. I just like it better. <laughs> it's more cool. So. Fancy. Oh my god. Sorry, right. I'm going to be making so many little noises through this because I <laughs> love the game that Alex is basing this off of. So if you hear me squeal for some reason, guys, I apologize in advance because I'm just way too excited for this. He breathed, he breathed this idea and I like blew up his, uh, his private messages. I was like, oh my God, are you going to do this? This is very true. All of those things did in fact happen. Take a shot every time Kinsey makes a noise. You're gonna, oh my gosh. You're gonna be drunk an hour in, I promise. Oh, you'll be, you, you will be more fucked up than 2020 is in the first 20 minutes. Jesus. Oh my god. <laughs> you, won't get, you won't get out of 2020 I'm, alive. I am kind of feel like taking that bet just in case, but I have a feeling I will probably have liver poisoning by the end of it. True. And you can't bring yourself back with anime dead. You don't have that real life ability. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, this is the first of, I don't know, multiple, um, a multiple session series from the Alice in Wonderland esque world, kind of based on the Alice into Madness video game. It is very twisted and very fun. Um, so, Lost in the Veil of Doom is a legendary teapot that Alice once used to defeat and imprison the Jabberwocky. Word from Wonderland, or what's left of it, says that it's under heavy guard um, from horrifying creatures, Queen's Guard, Hatter's inventions, and potentially the Mad Hatter himself, with the chains binding the Jabberwocky starting to weaken and Alice leading an army against the Red Queen. Um, the Dungeon Delvers Guild has been issued a quest to have um, some brave adventurers go into Wonderland to find this legendary teapot to try and turn the war in the favor of the White Army. So all of you, um, actually let's go ahead and do character introductions real quick. So you guys have all congregated in the main lobby of the Dungeons, Dungeon Delvers Guild, and we'll just start left to right in Roll20 with Zelana. Hi, I'm Zelana. I am a tiefling wizard cleric after a um, after a very strange experience when I was shrunk down to about the size of a bee. Uh, I decided that I needed to start learning a little bit more about how to heal people, and I became a cleric, and uh, I follow uh, for the path of the arcane. So... It's fun. It's exciting. I am a klutz, uh, so I apologize in advance. Um, uh, I'm purple with uh, big curved horns. I have big, uh, big black eyes. Um, I have white uh, tribal markings on my face. Um, uh, yeah, and I've been through a lot. So when they, uh, when this came about, I thought. This just sounds a little less dangerous than what I've been through in my life. So I decided to take the job. All right. Next up, we have Devin. We So um, I am Mavry, the sorcerer, wild mage, and uh, more recently here, bard. Um, I have been on some pretty interesting quests here lately uh i went to cobalt cavern in which me and my party almost died um uh, my wild magic ended up turning me into a sheep and i levitated myself that was that was pretty interesting uh, i don't I, I don't remember what i did after that but most recently i went to a circus uh protecting this baron from assassins uh, that was pretty fun. Uh, kind of scary. Uh, oh, I'm also a tiefling. I'm blue. And I have white hair and yellow eyes. Um, and yeah, I'm just kind of here doing more quests. I think it makes me a stronger person. And I'm from a noble family. And I'm going to be the ruler one day. 
So I think this is a good way to make me a strong person and therefore a better ruler in the future. Oh, and I'm Morthos' little sister. I don't know if you know him. I've heard a lot about him. I've never met him, though. Big ball, right. nothing with us. Scary dude. That's Bane. Okay. Hi, my name is Vincent. I am a death cleric, and I'm also Entrapta's brother. Well, big brother, in fact. Uh, although she might seem hyper, I am like the complete opposite of that. Um, I'm basically just going round and round all over the place, trying to like find like the different secrets between life and death. Trying to find myself mostly and recently i've been planning to have me and my associates set up in a special place where people like me can basically come together and that's pretty much it oh and my race i'm anything that you want me to be i'm a changeling i um talila I think. Talila. Talila, there we go. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm Talila. I am a wood elf ranger, and I'm really good at shooting things with my longbow and hunting for things. And yeah. Uh, so I'm just going around picking up odd jobs. And my last odd job was at a tavern, and that didn't really work out. So I thought we'd try something different. And also, this is Greg. And he's an axe beak. And he's a little grumpy, so just be careful around him. Right, and then Callum. Hello, my name is Callum, Tom is, uh, Callum Thompson. I am a fighter paladin combo. My whole life was devoted to finding my sister. Found my sister. She's doing well. Better off because I'm here to help her now. Uh... I recently converted to Ilmater, the broken god, because I met him and realized I could probably get stronger if I align myself with that guy. And I wasn't wrong. I have a really cool gun. I have a really cool blade. I have a really cool shield. Basically, everything about me is really cool. I have a wonderful fiance, Clara Bennett, who wants to have a lot of kids. And hopefully I can bring something home to show her that, you know, everything's going all right on my end. So whatever, I'm out by myself. I don't, think, I don't think she distrusts me, but I'm not the smartest guy. But I am pretty awesome, so, you know, it kind of evens out. Six foot seven, human variant. Absolutely awesome. And I'm here to protect and help out anybody, any way I can. Also, Mabry, your brother's really cool. He has a weird tentacle arm. It's, it's a lot cooler than it looks, I promise. So as you guys are all um, kind of passing the time, um, you were handed this quest, you saw it on the job board, and you guys all collectively joined up to take it. Um, as you move from the foyer out to the outside front of the Dungeon Delvers Guild main guild hall, I'm kind of wondering where you're supposed to go to start this, because it seems like it's not necessarily going to be on this plane. Um, out of nowhere, a very large, bearded, white, rabbit-looking humanoid with wizard robes, a monocle, and a clock hanging around their neck appeared appears in front of you. Um, um, are you, are you, are you the people who are gonna 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 go and um get a teapot for me? Is is that who you are? It's so cute. <laughs> And you just see Zelana just like tightens and squeals so excitedly. She runs over to him. And she's like, can I pet you? Um, n no, 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 you cannot. Um, this man is nine and a half feet tall, this humanoid. And he, they are very large. She, um, a very, very huge rabbit looking humanoid. Yeah. She is five foot four and she does not care. Cal <laughs> will walk over, hand on his hip and go, depends who's asking, Mr. I'm assuming bunny man's kind of rude. Yes, um, 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 my, my name is Julius, um, and I am the, um, um, how, how, how do I describe myself? Um, I'm, <sighs> I'm the timekeeper. Yes, yes, yes. The, the, the timekeeper and the, um, the organizer of Wonderland. As, and as you've seen from the, 
from the information that I put out, we're we're in some dire some dire straits. Um, we we need help. We we don't have Alice. She's busy right now. Um, we don't have any uh any other real real soldiers who aren't currently in the war and well dying. Um, so I need if you are the party that are going to go, that's great. Um, we we don't have a lot of time. I'm very 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 late. Um, uh, but I can send you to where you need to go. Um, when you come back, I'll give you 375 gold. Um, and then I'll be on my way. Um, are are you the party that's going? All all five of you? And this bird creature thing? And he's he's very good at helping. You want him to help us? Oh, okay, that's fine. As long as he doesn't peck at my feet, I'm I'm okay with that. Uh, Greg is looking at you funny, but because you're so big, I think he's gonna kind of stay back. Okay. Um. Well. Uh. When whenever you guys are ready, um, we can we can get going. Um. Just just let me know when you're ready, and you see him. You know how rabbits, kind of like how a rabbit from um, Bambi, like Thumper, would thump his foot? He's doing that like he's and watching the giant clock that's on his chest, tapping for time, very impatiently waiting for a response. Cal looks around and looks at Julius and goes, well, you seem like you're wanting us to hurry up. I'm ready when everyone else is. And I will give you my personal Caleb Thompson promise. I will do my very best to accomplish the task at hand. I don't know who Alice is, but I'm more than happy to help out. Um, this, great, great, great. Does anybody have any questions before we uh, we get going? Zolana will raise her hand. Ah, yes. Um, small, small one. Um, what, what questions do you have? Is it cold there? Should I bring a jacket? Yes, a jacket's always advisable. Okay, and she will run back inside to grab uh, her cloak at, and run back out and throw it on. Okay. I'm ready. Um, any uh, any other questions? Talila's gonna ask, how are we getting there? Exactly. Oh, I I will um I will take care of that for you. Oh, that sounds good. I have a question, actually. Yes, go for it. Do you need a hug? You seem like you're really out of it. Uh, I would I I would not be opposed. I was going to hug the giant bunny Julius and say it's okay. We all have bad days. <laughs> By bad day, I, I think you mean like bad millennia, but oh, okay, yeah, yes, 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 um, oh, okay, great. Um, any other questions, or is everybody um, ready to go? Yep. Okay, so he's like, okay, let me, um, let me start the process, and you see him start to draw a circle on the floor, um, embedding it with the runes, and before he finishes it, he stands up, and he goes through the rucksack that he carries on him and pulls out a small little potion um, and says, one of these are um, for each of you. I need you to go ahead and drink them. Um, and you, he passes a potion to each of you. Does it look familiar? It does not. This potion itself um, is, it's not a very large vial. It's about the size of like a test tube inside of it you see this um this fluorescent blue liquid that just kind of has this weird um glittery glow to it does greg get one yes there's one for each of you including Greg. Oh. <laughs> good I, i'm very excited about having to force him to drink this thing <laughs> <laughs> do you guys all drink these potions yes so he was yeah, gonna yeah. try to force greg to drink his first though cal would just like look at the bottle shake it a bit tap the glass and then go all right and drink it <laughs> uh so Zola I... zolana will pop hers open and then sniff it can i can i try to roll an arcana check on it yeah go for it So it has Ugh. the. It actually doesn't smell awful. It smells like blueberry tea. <gasps> Ooh! And she will instantly down it. Okay. As you drink these potions, um, you see a small smirk kind of come across Julius's face, and he says under his breath, "I love this part. 
um, and he just waits. And you all feel the anatomy of your body start to shift. You feel your muscles. You know that when working out, when running, they feel like they're expanding from being exhausted, but you feel your whole body getting tighter and tighter and tighter, then all of a sudden, the world around you gets 3,000 times bigger. It's as if you have shrunk or the world has grown. Uh, but when you look up at Julius, he now is towering, probably a hundred foot tall. And you turn and you look back at the front door of the Dungeon, Dungeon Delvers Guild, and that no longer looks like a normal door. It looks like a door that you could put a mountain through. You have all shrunk down to about two inches tall, and he finishes drawing these runes on the ground. He says, well, um, good luck. I will, uh, I'll see you, well, hopefully soon. And as soon as he strikes the uh, strikes the ground with his chalk one last time, all of you start to, you feel your bodies get sucked into a vacuum of space. And as you're being sucked, you all of a sudden reappear and you all begin to fall. You fall downwards. Um, as you're falling, you're falling through the blackness of space. Um, you see stars. Uh, what you think are stars, or at least different colored lights in the sky uh, going up past you. You hear a combination of white noise to voices to different animal cre um, calls and different creatures, creature sounds. You see um, different colors swirling around you, and then blackness. Your vision seems to come in and out. Um, everything seems to be depriving you of any sense of direction that you may have, but you feel like you are continuously falling down. Um, go ahead and make a perception check as you are falling. Solana's going to shout to Talila, this is a different version of small than we had before! Because they had both been shrunk before at one point. This one's a lot more yeah. dizzy. This one's dizzy! <laughs> Ooh. Vince okay. is very dizzy. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So as you guys are falling, um, everybody except Talila is kind of caught up and you're almost starting to feel sick. Vincent's definitely feeling sick and probably at this point going to throw off very soon if you do not land. Um, everything's still spinning, but Talila, you managed to catch a, a glint of something, something different. It almost looks like something's floating um, towards you but not super fast. It looks like you could almost swim move your way over to this if you so choose. Yes, I'm going to swim over to it. So as you you all look and you see Talila like swimming through this Willy Wonka astral plane hodgepodge of just sensory deprivation occurring around you, um, Talila, you swim towards this glint and it gets bigger and starts to become, starts to form a shape that you are very, very familiar with. You reach out and you grab this shape of um, of a longbow, and I'm actually going to put Sweet. this in your journal. So you have found, um, in doing this, you found yourself a longbow of sensory deprivation. So um, I will read it out just because, actually, I can put it in everyone so you can all see it, so you can just uh, all see what it does. All players. So you found this homebrew item that I made that it I think is pretty neat. Beautiful. Yes. So this is what Talila acquires. It does not require attunement. Um, it is a plus one bow. And as a bonus action, you can speak its command word, which can be whatever you want it to be. Um, and then you can choose one creature you can see to make a con save. If it fails, it's blinded or deafened for the duration. And you can do that. Did I not put how many times per day you can do that? I think it's three. I think it's three times per day. Three times per long rest. It's effectively the um, the blindness deafness spell you can cause to occur on one creature three times per day as a bonus action shooting it. Um, so as you grab this longbow um, and you now have it on your person, you guys are still falling. Um, and what feels like an hour, maybe less, maybe more, time is kind of not necessarily the easiest thing to manage when you're constantly falling and spinning and having your senses deprived. You all land 
on an oversized or what feels like an oversized mushroom into um, this room. This isn't necessarily the most accurate representation of this room. I just needed a room. Um, but you land on a mushroom um, surrounded by stump chairs. That's very loud. There we go. Um, you look around. And you see there are chairs in the shape of stumps. It looks like you're in a kitchen, but outside. But still with a floor, walls, and with a hole in the roof that, while staring at it, seems to be an eternal blackness from where you fell through. This room is full of boxes, it's full of grass and moss on the floor and the ground. There are some blood-stained walls a set of double onyx doors with exceptionally large silver adamantine knobs on one side of the room um, and that is what you see as you get your senses back to yourselves whoa i gotta learn how to do that that was an experience what kind of magic was that that's magic I gotta learn how to do. I oh, that was cool. I catch that kind of magic. Uh, I hope it's not just bunny magic. <laughs> so what do you guys want to do in this room? You see those boxes around. You see those giant onyx double doors. Uh, and that seems to be the only way out of the room. Other than the big hole that you fell through. Calyx around. Is everyone mostly alright? I mean, Talila seems fine. Uh, how about the rest of you? You seem alright too, little Miss Zelana, was it? Yeah. A little, little dizzy, but I'm okay. She kind of like takes a couple steps. It's not really doing really well. Don't worry, I'm right there with you. Mavery, Vincent, how are you two? I feel like I'm going to throw up, but go otherwise, ahead. good. Go ahead and roll a constitution save to see if you do, in fact, throw up. Oh, no. It'll be a DC 12. If you pass it, you don't throw up. If you fail, you will throw up. So you you feel it come up from your stomach and you feel it hit the back of your throat and you kind of hold it in and swallow it back down. Uh, it's not good. You good? Uh, yeah, just barely, but I'm good. Hang in there, you'll be okay. Mavery, how are you? I'm okay, I think. It's all very strange. We'll be okay. So, we're gonna go through those doors or look around this room. Well, I kind of want to look in those boxes, but how tall are the boxes in comparison to how tall we are right now? Um, so for everything in this room except for the doors and this giant table you fell on, everything seems appropriate sized for you, like for you guys. Um, so the chairs would be like a normal sized chair for like a regular six foot tall person to sit in. The doors are like 15 feet tall and about 10 feet wide. So they're very, very large, but the boxes are only one to two feet um, by in, by height and width, so. Okay. Uh, Zolana. Go ahead. Uh, Zolana's gonna run over to the to the closest box and uh, okay. try to open it. Cal will Roll. go over and help. Okay. Roll investigation checks, please. Da -da. Eleven. God, I hope it's not an eleven night for me. <laughs> okay. So as you guys are looking through these boxes, you see in one of the box just seems to be um, broken on the bottom, and it seems to have some mushrooms growing out inside of it. Um, but in one of the other boxes, you discover there are two potions of greater healing and a scroll of teleportation circle with two uses. So effectively, two teleportation circle scrolls. Cal will look over at Zelana and points the scrolls and go, 
I'm sure you can cast them like this, right? Oh, yeah. For sure. She th she rolls it open and sees what it is and closes it and gets really giddy. She's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I can cast this. Cal gives you a thumbs up and looks at the potions and picks them up. I don't know who would need these, but I'll carry them just in case and let the party know I have them. I can cast healing magic as well, but better safe than not. Yeah, anybody can cast the scrolls, whether you're... As long as you have the ability to cast even a single cantrip, you have the ability to cast these scrolls. But if you have no magic per your person, then you can utilize them, because you're not magical. Perfect, good to know. Venture back to the group. We found scrolls of teleportation and two healing potions. Cal holds up the healing potions. Unless somebody thinks they really need them, I'll carry them in case you need to be healed. I do have some healing magic as a paladin, so I'm willing to help out if you, if you need it. Yep, and they were two greater healing potions, just, to, just so you remember. Well, spelled teleportation wrong, but close oh, enough. Yep, that's what, teleportation. I like Tele it. Teleportation. <laughs> All right. So, what else do you guys want to do in this room? If there's nothing else you guys want to do, we should maybe try to go through those doors. Yeah, I don't mind doing that. Okay. So you go up and you try to open the doors. Um, and as you try to turn these large silver adamantine doorknobs, um, you kind of, you feel that they're locked. And as you go to turn to kind of figure out how to open them, you see that the keyholes open wide as if they're yawning. And you see two sets of bloodshot eyes slowly blink awake as the doors slovenly say the following. For you to pass three riddles, we will ask. If you succeed, we will heed. If you fail in your battles, we will regale. And they speak the first riddle to you. The door on the left says, I create my lair with earthen string, and dispatch my prey with a biting sting. What am I? You have one guess. Spider. Can Talila roll a nature check or something to see if she knows of a creature like that? You can. Okay. Oh, Yay! nice roll! Talila, good job. Woo! Yes. You feel like Spider is probably pretty close to what they're asking for. Okay. So I'll say some kind of spider. They kind of, the two bloodshot eyes look at each other. And they blink as if, like, agreeing with each other. Say, riddle number two. What can bring back the dead, make you cry, make you laugh, make you young, is born in an instant, yet lasts a lifetime? You have one guess. Alana's gonna look at the death cleric. Yes. <laughs> Cal's not guessing out loud. I'm, I'm just typing out what I think it might be based off of. Because I feel like a memory is something that, that that doesn't really change. I mean, that's a really good guess, in my opinion. Like, yeah. Yeah. I read a lot of riddles in my spare time, and I feel <laughs> like this is one of those riddles where it's a very simple one. I hope I'm not wrong, but I, I'm very confident that it's memories. I just don't want to get it wrong. Is memories your answer? If no one else wants to answer, we can try to save memories. Yeah, I think 
memories. Yeah, I'll 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 vote I'll vote for that. But Zelana would not come up with that. I guarantee it. Yeah. They both of the doors, the eyes kind of look at each other, and look at all of you, and say, "Hmm. Normally, that gets at least one person. Never mind. Riddle number three." What is always old and sometimes new, never sad, sometimes blue, never empty, but sometimes full, never pushes, always pulls. You have one guess. First half, I was going to say cheese, but... <laughs> Sometimes blue, I was like, cheese. Cheese. Not cheese anymore. <laughs> what is always full and sometimes new, never sad, sometimes blue, never empty, but sometimes full, never pushes, always pulls. Always old, but always sometimes old. new, sometimes never sad, new. sometimes blue. Never sad, sometimes blue. Never empty, sometimes full. Pushes, always full. I feel like the blue part it might be literal. Um, I think it might be literal too. When I see blue, I think of some kind of body of water because I do, because water doesn't push, but it pulls because of currents. What's an old body of water that's sometimes new? The moon. Old mm. new moon. No. The moon. Blue yeah. Moon? Because the moon Old pulls moon. the tides. The moon pulls the tides. This is out of character, by the way, that I'm saying this. Same here. <laughs> yes. Like, yes. Yes. Who's clever well, enough to get a blue moon? You're it's right. Yeah. I, I... It's for sure a moon. Yeah, yeah, it's a new moon, a blue moon. It Sometimes it's a full moon, and it never pushes. It pulls, so that's the tide. So it would be a blue moon. Yeah. Yeah, so... Hey, which character is smart enough to guess that? <laughs> I mean... I don't want to say Caligan because I'm, <laughs> I mean, Cal's a person. I'm surprised he got memories. I, I guess Vincent would say it. Yeah, probably, probably, like, probably yeah. Vincent. Probably Vincent. Okay, so Vincent's going to look at the doors and say moon. The moon is the answer. They look at each other and they yawn and they say, yes, yes, that's right. But you can't wake us up and not give us a show. You're gonna still have to fight if you want us to let you through. <laughs> Who are so, we gonna fight? Not very fair. So go ahead and throw your tokens on the map. Awesome. And you see three sea hags appear. I don't know how to do that. Uh, I can put it on for you, no worries. Um. Uh... Thank you. Uh, and then, oh, there's Greg. One, two, three, four. Uh, who's missed not here? Avery. There we go. Oh, no, wait. I made you. There you go. I made you GM later for some reason. All right. <laughs> there you go. All right. So let's roll. Let's roll initiative. <laughs> I will tell you that had you got each and every single one of them wrong, there was a total of 18 different enemies to fight. Oh my god! <laughs> so the more oh, that you got geez. right, reduced the total number of things that you were going to have to fight. Thank goodness oh, for man. that. From 18 down to 3. They weren't all sea hags. They were different things. But, <laughs> yes. So never, have, never have I ever been so happy to have spent my time reading riddles as a teenager. <laughs> yeah, as I, like started riddles, fun fun thing, I was like, man, I spent a while trying to find fun riddles, and here we are. But <laughs> that third one was good. That, that third was one was really good. tough. Yeah. Devin was like, cheese, it's a cheese. Blue moon. I'm like, oh, oh, that's 
that's got to be it. <laughs> Devin coming in with the once in a blue moon. Yes. That was, that was perfect. perfect. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all right. Well, that's where the sea hags appear. The map is to scale. So all the squares should be five feet. So it is um, Talila's turn, I believe. Yeah, just let me see. And you can use your new bow if you wish. I and am you can, gonna if, use my new if bow. If Greg does anything, he can just do it um, on your turn instead of having to roll a token for Greg. Okay, so he still he still uses my action if I tell him to do something, though, right? That's how it uh, works with rangers, I think. Are you are you a beastmaster? No. Nope. Uh, no. Well, we'll say that it is. A bonus action because I don't. I feel like it punishes rangers if they do. Yeah, it the other way. Mm -hmm. you're right. So. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna use my fancy new bow. Okay. And let's see. There we go. I'm gonna aim for the one that's closest, straight in the front there. For yeah, 19 to hit. Uno. Yes, that does absolutely hit. Yay. Okay, and I think. They're not within five feet of each other. Nope, that's good then. That'll be my turn for now. Okay. Um, so that sea hag, who has a movement of 30 feet, is going to go ahead and run up to... Well, the only person that she can really get to. Well, both of you guys. Um, she's just going to run straight. Bam. Straight ahead. And she is going to try and hit you with a claw attack um, for a 14. Ah. Is a 14 hit? Yes, it does. Okay, no. so 14 for 11 slashing damage. Ah! And that is the Sea Hag's turn. It's okay. It. okay, so I'm going to move 1, 2, 3, 4... And I'm gonna hit her. I'm guessing it's a her with. It's a sea hag looking thing, so. Yeah. It's a yeah. very ugly humanoid. <laughs> uh, chill touch. Oh, yeah, that definitely hits. 95. Uh, okay. Wait, what? Uh, 90, yeah. no, 25, <laughs> not 95. I was, <laughs> I was kind of scared. That, that definitely hits her. <laughs> yeah, if you rolled a 95, it's like, well, you kill her, so. <laughs> <laughs> she dies. Murdered. Oh. Flat murdered. All right. Yep, that hits. And then okay. she'll touch. She can't get her any HP back, right? If I remember. Uh, no, I don't think so. She can't heal if you get oh. to um, chill touch. Okay. Cannot regain hit points. Yeah. Yeah, I can't regain health. That's, That's one. Real. All right. Yeah. Cool. Is that your turn? Um. Uh, yep. Yeah, I'll I'll leave it at that. Alrighty. Cal. Cal saw Mabry get hit, and it's nothing against Vincent, but Cal knows what he can do. Cal's going to move in front of Vincent and ready his and um, attack the sea hag right here with his rep with his rapier and shield at hand. Okay. Anybody within five feet of me, if they get hit, uh, the attack is at, is at disadvantage as long as Cal holds his shield, which is why I have the shield out right now. Sounds good. So I'm going to be a literal human shield, so none of you can get hit without great effort on their part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes! Woo! Cal sees Mavery get hit. He knows Mavery is a bard. He goes into big brother mode. He knows that that's more than his little sister, and he's like, God, no, how dare you? <laughs> All right, and we'll do dice Wait, plus max. I can, I, I can attack twice. Yeah, and so that's what eighteen damage, correct? Yeah. All right, yeah, you can you can probably attack twice, right? With Cal. That one probably doesn't hit though. That one does not hit. After you come down and just take, you almost separate the sea hag's right arm from their body. Um, they pull back in just so much pain that the flailing arm kind of just bounces the rapier off target. So. You miss with the second attack. <laughs> and is that your turn? I will end my turn there, giving a thumbs up from <laughs> like a thumbs up to um, Zelana and Vincent and Mavery, saying, "Don't worry, I'll take all the hits." 
Alrighty. Zolana. Zolana's going to return the thumbs up back to Cal um, with much enthusiasm. And then she's going to pull out her wand and take aim at Sea Hag number two. Okay. With a firebolt. All right. Beep. Ah. That misses. You go and you hit her their very, very moist skin. And as it hits, you see the firebolt just kind of fizzles out. She she visibly pouts. <laughs> She's like, aw, thought thought I thought I had that. Oh, oh well. And then she's gonna uh, actually. She'll stay. She'll stay there, knowing that Cal can knock something out of the way if it gets to her. So she'll stay there. <laughs> okay. So that sea hag who has just been hit or warmed up by your fire bolts is going to have to use. It will run up and try and hit Callum, because that's all it can reach to be able to hit. Are attacks against you at disadvantage, or just everything around you? It's because of my uh, fighting style, because uh, as long as I have a shield on hand, if any, if one of the bad guys tries to hit any, anyone within five feet of me, I can kind of like deflect it with my shield, so... Does that include yourself, wrote. or just everybody else? That's everybody else. That's my fighting okay. style. It's just me protecting others. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, it doesn't matter, because they rolled a 7. So, <laughs> yes! um, I'm pretty sure 7 misses. So, alright. Mavery. Whee! <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this one in front of me, it's not, like, too close to, like, cast the spell at or anything, right? Like, I'd, I'd say you could cast a spell at her from there without disadvantage. Okay, sweet. I um, would how like do you? To you're cast... a wild. You're a wild mage sorcerer, right? Yes. Okay, so how do you normally do wild mage surge table? Because I think I do it differently. I should have asked you this before, but. Um. So I have an ability mm -hmm. called Tides of Chaos. So when I say that I'm using that, I can use it to gain advantage on one attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. Um, I get one use of it, and whenever you tell me, hey, I'm making you roll wild magic, okay. I regain the use of that. Okay, so the reason I ask is because the way that I do sorcerers rolling on the wild magic table or wild magic sorcerers is i start your dc oh do you do the the roll for every spell cast no absolutely not um the way i do it is i start your dc oh, okay. at zero and for every leveled spell that you cast it adds the equivalent of that spell level to the dc so if you cast a fifth level spell your dc would go up by five and then whenever i say to roll if you meet or beat that dc then you don't worry about it and it resets but if you fail the dc then you roll on the magic search table wild search table oh fun yeah i think it it lets you have more opportunity to roll on the search table without it being too drastic but yeah so that's all i want to know but yeah it is right. oh, yeah. your turn <laughs> i'll keep track of the dc on my end too just Yay! So you don't have to worry about it <laughs> okay i write it down <laughs> awesome <laughs> Uh, I would like to cast Ray of Frost on the sea hag in front of me. Okay. Uh, 17 definitely hits. The sea hag is looking Woo. real hurt. Yay! It's a cheer from the other side of Vincent. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that your turn? And as a uh, as a Bonus action. Um. Uh, my my new friend, uh, Caleb here. You know he uh he came out and was a human shield for me. So she's like, oh, you're so awesome and strong, and give him bardic inspiration. <laughs> Inspired shields. Cal gives you a look and like smirks, like looking around with shit, like shifty eyes, like points at points at himself, mouths the words at me. Ah, ha! <laughs> and he just focuses back on the battle. All right, sea hag number three, seeing what is going on, they are going to 
go ahead and use their full action because they can only move 30 feet. So they're going to use their movement and their action to get bam right there. Deep. And that is their turn because they don't have any bonus actions right now. So, <laughs> to Leila. Five, ten, fifteen. I'm going to get over here so I get a nicer shot. Okay. Greg's just going to follow me. Because <laughs> he's a good boy. Uh, and then, okay, I'm going to pull out that fancy new longbow and give it a try. Okay. And so, uh, I don't have the actual thing in Beyond That's fine. 20, it's, um, but... So basically, you can just add, it's a plus one to attack and damage. So whatever so I, you... I put just... a plus one on there. Yep. So that works. Get, yep, and then you'll and then... get a plus one to damage as well. And then a bonus action, you can say whatever you want the command word to be. Yes. And then okay. it becomes black with energy, and you can use the uh, the charge to blind or deafen. Wow, I did not think of a word. Um... <laughs> Great. <laughs> You can say whatever Usually, you want it to be. Yeah, hit him, Greg, and Greg squawks. I will tell you, um, this creature only has ten hit points left. If you're shooting okay. Seahag, if you're shooting Seahag one, so I don't know if you want to still use it on that guy or not. That's up to you. I just don't want you uh, to feel like you wasted it. That's all. I mean, that's fair. Okay, so I'll just. Mm, uh, how about instead? We'll take Sorry. The, uh, we'll still take it's the damage. So it's actually nine damage, right? Because it's a plus one to plus one additional on top of I that. I think. Oh, it didn't add it. Yeah, so it is a nine. So this thing is literally on death's door, coughing up <laughs> seawater. Just, just trying to see what else I can do to give a little more. But I think that's. Don't you get two? Yeah. Attacks? No, I don't. I don't think I do. Are you level five ranger? Level six, yeah. Yeah, you get two shots. Why is it not on my D and D Beyond be. then? Uh, it, under actions, it should say attacks per action, and then you should have number yep. two on there. Do you see that? Yep, because you get an extra. Oh, attack. you're right. I totally do. Sorry, guys. It's been forever <laughs> since I played this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm gonna kill it with another shot. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Yay. Oh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you you unleash this so first not. arrow, which sinks through his throat, like goes clean in, clean out, and you just see seawater coughing up. And as it heaves over to cough up a mix of like dark gray blood and seawater, the other arrow you unleash just whew, goes right over its head, and sea hag number two kind of ducks out the way. This sea hag is on death's door with one HP. And let me, yeah, every creature within 30 feet of this sea hag go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw of 11 or you're frightened for a minute i am frightened 12. <laughs> okay did you pass, um it did you got 12. yeah if okay. you pass you're immune to the effects but if you fail you're obviously not immune so to no, the effects because you are Zalana affected. got Zalana got the 12. i'm not sure if mine went through um, no, it did not, because we have uh, Talila's... Uh, oh, since... boy. There we go. Okay. Cal, so, what are you doing? So Callum, Mavery, and Talila are all afraid. Wait, can I have my this... bardic inspiration? I don't know if it would help. Uh, I have to roll. Yeah, you have to get an okay. 11. So. Come on. If you want to use it, you are... Oh, so. oh, so no, I'm this. scared. Okay. So the three of you are currently frightened from Sea Hag number one right now. So anybody who is, so the way this will work, anybody who's passed it is going to be immune from the effect from all of them for 24 hours. Anybody who fails, if this creature dies, can be subjected to it from one of the other hags until they pass the save. Got it. Cool. All right. Um, and it uses that as its turn. Um, and it's going to, who's, who to get afraid of? Mavery, Angelana, Vincent's there. I think, it doesn't think it can run away. So it's just going to try and take a claw attack at the thing that hurt it the most last time. So it's going to take a claw attack at, at Cow, and it's going to roll a 16. That misses. That's what I thought. Big old human paladins with shields. 
All right. Um, so it misses, and that's its turn. It can't go anywhere. Vincent. Yeah, you absolutely can. Chill touch. Do you? It's going to miss. Twelve will not hit. Do you do anything else on your turn? Reaper. Uh, well, it'll miss, so it's not going to hit any of them, unfortunately. But that would have been very effective against two of them. Okay. Um, do you have any bonus actions you want to use, Vincent? Nope. All right. Well, that's his turn. Cal, um, you are afraid for your turn. And as far as I'm aware, fear just means you can't attack anything within line of sight of that. You can't move towards it, right? Yeah, so... So you Cal can attack the other two if you wanted to. So which one am I afraid of? Um, number one. Okay, right. so yep. I will attack Sea Hag number two in front of me with the same shield. Sounds good. <laughs> well, this. <laughs> oh my god! Wow. Wow! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Holy! Wow! The duality. I feel so bad. So the first time he's just still kind of shook, and the second time just screw it. <laughs> so. Wow, those are almost identical rolls. So basically it was what, um, 15 to begin with. So seven plus eight is 15 plus six, 21 plus effectively another 21 would be 42 minus three, 39 damage the to first, yeah. the first. Yeah, so the two natural 20s end up being 39 damage. Well, I, I, I mean, aren't you gonna count the first one? I mean, I only get two hits, so. Oh. It would actually I'm... be the net one. I, I'm double clicked and I got oh. two net 20s and I'm so bummed by that. <laughs> gotcha. That's how I was counting them both. Well, then you, yeah. did 21, you did 21 damage to the Sea Hag then instead of 39. So, <laughs> Which is still a significant chunk of damage to the Sea Hag. Yeah. I feel like Cal look, looked over at the Sea Hag when I was like, nope. Looks over and goes, oh, that's right there. Wait, that's a different hag. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and at the end of your turn, you can go ahead and make the save again, wisdom save of 11, to see if you can break the fear. You are no longer afraid of that. Um, Cal looks over, realizes how easy it was to hit Seahag 2, looks over at Seahag 1 and goes, if you don't die soon, I will knock you down. I'm just going to put green dots on here so I remember who's... Uh, yep, super cool. All right, Zelana, it is your turn. Zelana lets out a scream of fear as the sea hag bolts up to her, and she reaches her hands out, and she um, grabs it by its shoulders and casts Shocking Grasp. Oh, snap. <laughs> uh, that's definitely going to hit. <laughs> 14 points wondering... of lightning damage. <laughs> I was wondering when somebody was going to drop the Shocking Grasp. Yeah. Man. Leave these, it to the uh, wizard. <laughs> these hags are, are hurting. And these two are looking pretty hurt. This other one's going to die very soon. Uh, um, okay. Is that your turn? Um, are you trying to move away? There's also not a hole in the floor right here. So you can move there if you wanted to. You won't oh, fall down okay. anywhere. That's, that's there, good. Yeah, there, there is no hole there. It's just the only cool picture I could find. So. Um... No, that is the that is the end of my turn, and I will I will stay there, as I like pull my hands off of it and kind of look down like ew. Okay, awesome. All right, so this sea hag, sea hag number two, seeing that they just got jacked up, hearing the fearsome, um, seeing the fearsome glare and shriek of their sister hag, they can see that a couple creatures are still frightened so they are going to go ahead and stare they're going to cow you see the eyes on this hag turn this dark scarlet blood red and they snap their head and turn and look directly at talila can i need you to go ahead and make a dc ah. 11 wisdom saving throw since you are frightened come on, come on. so hey. as as you feel this as you see this glare and you lock eyes with this hag you feel your life force start to come out of your body like you're feeling your soul get ripped away and you just shake it off real quick 
and the glare seems to have no effect on you. Hey. Um, and so that is the hag's turn, and she just looks back at Cal and just snarls. Mavery. Yes. I get back on my slow page. <laughs> Would like... Um, you cannot attack Sea Hag number one because you're afraid of Sea Hag number one. So you could attack the other two, but not number one. Yeah. Okay. So on uh, number two, I would like to cast Acid Splash. Okay, and that would affect both of them. Fifteen Ooh. deck save. Um, let's see. It rolled a. Uh... 13, so it <gasps> fails. And then that hits both of them, right? Two creatures within 50, five feet of each other? If I recall, ask the splash correctly. I believe so. Cool. Um, yeah, it's be within five. Yep, and both of the hags are within five feet of each other, so... Let's do it. The other one rolls a 19. So Yay. the other one's unaffected, but the first one takes 10, 10 acid damage. Um, and you can go ahead at the when it's the end of your turn, you can roll a wisdom save to try and shake off your fear. Okay. So... You may have me roll wild magic whenever you please. Okay. Cool. Um, did you roll? Because it didn't come up on here. Is your wisdom safe anywhere? Yeah, it's... Oh, there it is. Uh, okay. Cool. That's right. I think... Yeah. A seven still fails. So, okay. Sad. Yep, it is an 11. She's really afraid of this hag. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Sea hag number, number three, seeing that you... Well, no. It doesn't like the fact that it just got electrocuted. So it's going to go ahead and attack the thing that just electrocuted it. Um, does a 14 hit you, Zelana? Yes! All right. Disadvantage because I'm within 5 feet of her. All right. Yeah. Uh, Jesus. A natural 1. So... Yes! <laughs> it, um, this, this hag goes to slash down. And as it goes to slash down, just out of nowhere, you see a cow kind of like, Nope, just stick their shield just bat it away and then this hag just looks shockingly surprised at the fact that a metallic shield just seemed to come from out of nowhere to block its hit against you all right and it has no other actions so on its turn anyway <laughs> Taliva, it is your turn you are still afraid of sea hag number one so okay. you cannot shoot that one i can and still then... attack the other two um let me see I think it's with disadvantage, yes. isn't it? It's disadvantage on attack rolls while the source of its fear is within its line of sight. And so because you so have both to shoot them. past it, yeah, because the yeah. other ones can turn their back, you can't do that. Okay, you, I, you, I'm unless you still going to... Uh, uh, I guess I could. Just the angle you're at right now, you're basically going to have to look past Sea Hag number one. Or you can attack at disadvantage. That's really up to you. I'm not... Well, technically, I can't move closer to Sea Hag one anyway. It's true. Best you could do would be move to, like, over here so. somewhere. But it's up to you. Attack how... Okay, let's do that. Let's go up okay. here again, back where I was. Greg's going to follow. Because he's a good boy. <laughs> he's just staying out of range. Because he's a good boy, and I don't want him to get hurt right now. Okay. Um, so... Which one of the two is weaker? Number two or number three? Um, number two looks a little bit weaker. Looks like okay, they're panting so a little heavier. In that case, I'm going to start by attacking number three. Okay. The one that's stronger. Okay. I'm going to use my two yeah. attacks. Um, the first one will hit, and it will take 13 total damage. Oh, okay. Unless you added and... that plus one in there. Nope, not yet. Cool. Okay. Nope, not yet. All right. Okay, and then I also have Horde Breaker. 
which means that I can do one more attack against the one beside it. Okay. Nice. So I will roll that now. 16 16. definitely hits. Um, The sea hag is looking real worse for wear. Awesome. Um, And you can go ahead and roll another wisdom save. Since it's the end of your turn to see if you can shake off that fear. You do not shake off that fear. (laughs) I'm very scared of that one in particular. (laughs) Um, The sea hag, who is on one HP in death's door, is just going to take a swing out at... um, at Mavery, right in front of it. At disadvantage. And it rolls a nine both times. So, pretty sure nine misses. Does a nine miss, Mavery? It does. Yay! Yes. Alright. Yeah. Right. Well, this uh, this dying sea hag is not the most effective at physical melee combat. <laughs> um, <laughs> Alright. Vincent, it is your turn. Uh, 19 is definitely going to hit. Which one do you want to hit? One, two, or three? Uh, Reaper, so it's going to hit two. Okay, which two do you want to hit? Two and three. Okay, so they both take eight all right. Yes. Well done. Um, sea Hag 2 is looking almost as bad as Sea Hag number 1. And Sea Hag 3 is also on... Not quite Death's Door, but getting close. So... Cal, it's your turn. Cal will hit... Okay, so it's it's 2 and 3 that aren't looking good? Yeah, Sea Hag 1 and 2 are the absolute worst. They're very very close to death and sea hag 3 is also looking pretty pretty messed up okay so i will hit sea hag 2 in front of me and if i can kill it i'll also hit sea hag 1 okay and i miss so i'll try to hit the sea hag again okay 21 definitely hits and you actually kill this one because it had 3d hp yes uh, do you want to kill it um Cal would, okay, so you miss and he's upset, takes a deep breath and imagines Clara bonking him on the head with a quarterstaff and just slashes across its face and watches it fall down and goes, Clara would be proud. (laughs) Very dead sea hag. Um, Is that your turn? That is my turn. All right. Solana, you have this this getting hurt sea hag in front of you and this on death's door sea hag down... um, a little ways from you. Well, it, it worked before, so let's do it again. Uh, grab and grasp. 14. 14 is it Tacy? Yes! Um, so 12, and 12 lightning. You grab the sea hag by the throat and you just imbue it with lightning. And it's almost like you hit it with a defibrillator. It kind of, its heart stopped for a second and then it restarted and it's looking real messed up. Cool. Stay in there, run it away. Anything else you want to do? Uh, let go and brace myself for possible incoming impact because I hit it. <laughs> All right. Um, Mavery, you are still afraid of sea hag number one. Um, but you have this other sea hag up there. Darn. She's just so scary. She does have a... Or the thing that scared you, the ability is actually called horrific appearance. So she's very <laughs> ugly. You're afraid of she's her horror. So punch. ugly. <laughs> she's so <laughs> ugly. She make you scared. Mm-hmm. Um let's see. Okay. I would like to use Magic missile. Ooh, at what level? So, uh, uh, just the first. Okay. Um, but with the the three uh darts, as it says that I get, can I can I target like? Oh, 
the other sea hex gone. Ha <laughs> ha. Yep. No, so I can't target both of the sea hex. Yeah. So I'm just gonna, uh, yeah, just gonna target sea hex number three with all that, and I keep clicking the wrong stuff. It'll auto hit because it's Yay. magic missile. So, um, it's one d four plus charisma three times. I think. Um. I think. So if I. I have magic missile. Let me check. Yeah, hold on. Let me let me see what this. Yeah, it's this one d four plus one. Yeah. Oh, then yeah. Oh, then yep, it's one d four. So you get to just roll that yeah. three times. So. Yep. Two, five, and four. Okay, so it's nine, eleven. All right. So, how do you want to kill this this bad boy? Sea hag. Yeah, can it explode? So as you that would um, be really cool. As you see Mavery look at the horribly ugly sea hag in front of her, go, yeah. She like turns and unleashes three quick <laughs> magic missiles out of her hands, and you see them kind of spiral up through the room, trace in between the silver adamantine um, mouths of the doorknobs, and. <laughs> Hit the sea hag, and the sea hag kind of looks at you for a second, Zelana, stunned and shocked, ha, shocked, <laughs> um, and just explodes all over you. So now you have like seawater hag guts and seaweed hair just all over your person. Uh, oops. Uh, uh, that's so. It's so. <laughs> That was so cool! And, like, she shouts <laughs> at Mabry from, like, over Vincent, or, like, around Vincent, over to Mabry. That was so cool! Anything else you would She's like to like, do yeah! on your turn? Uh, um, no, that's gonna be it. Alright, go ahead and roll a wisdom save to see if you can finally not be scared of the sea hag anymore. <laughs> Man, I hope so. Nope, you are still scared of this oh, ugly no. hag. <laughs> no. Um. Jeez. Well, Talila, it's your turn, and. And I'm very scared of it. You can't attack the thing that you're afraid of. So, okay. Um, so go I'm just ahead. gonna roll my wisdom then. Is that okay? Yeah, you can absolutely do that. Okay. You're still nope. also afraid. <laughs> <of this laughs> I'm very scared. Oh, Greg, yeah. don't go over there. It's scary. The sea hag, seeing that you just butchered its sister, is going to try and um, slash at you, um, Mavery, with disadvantage to see if it even gets to. I know my luck. Uh, does a 14 hit? It does. Okay, that's better than the natural 20 that it rolled. Um, so, 9 slashing damage. <laughs> And Ooh. it's it's got nowhere in this room it can run, so it's just gonna stay there screaming seawater in your face. Um, Vincent. Ah. Um, it dies. Um, so you see Vincent pull out Clementine, and if I recall, Clementine is a gun, I think. Warhammer. Okay, so Vincent jumps, or basically turns, spins this warhammer around and just bonks it right on the head, like just crushing in the skull of the sea hag and splatting it to the floor like what happens when a person smacks a mosquito with a fly swatter. And it just explodes guts everywhere. You two are no longer afraid of this dead, horrifying visage, even though it's much uglier than it was before. Um, you are no longer under the feared condition. And that completes this combat. Oh, that one was really scary. That one in particular. It was so ugly. So as, um, as combat concludes and they, all the sea hags die, you hear the two doors go. They're more awake at this point. They go, Hmm. Well, um, jolly good show then. Jolly good show. I think that deserves um an entrance through the passage. 
let's um let's open this shall we brother and the other one you see the door handle just nod up and down like it's nodding its head and you see these two giant onyx doors swing open and what you see before you is a darkened chamber cal looks around at everybody um kind of stretching after after combat and going if everyone's all right we can advance those hags were really gross but we're all okay so it's fine (laughs) Cal looks over the doors and goes, yeah, but we got out of it okay. All right, so um, as you guys are, wait for a second until he comes back. Um, how are you looking after taking those uh, those claw attacks, Mavery? You looking all right? Mavery, how much damage did you take from, from all that? Um, a significant amount. Hold on, let me, uh... <laughs> I was gonna say, I know I hit you at least twice. Go over to my Cal. page, sorry. You're yeah, good. I took, like, 20 damage total, so... Cal-, Cal would look at you and offer a greater healing potion and say, it's why we have them, so... That is true. And, and then Cal want- will put his hand on your head and kind of, like, like oh. tussle your hair a bit. And if you want to drink a greater healing, I believe it's 4d4 plus 4. Oh. Yep. I think. She just giggles. <laughs> Calyx, as, as a long okay. other one, do you need one too? Offering it out to her. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Cal shows her shoulders. All right. Well, we have it if we need it. Oh, were you talking about the potion? Yeah. The one I'm holding right here. <laughs> Solana tilts tilts her head a little bit, and then she points to uh, Mavery's head, and then she points to hers, and she's like, I thought you were talking about that. Oh, Cal looks <laughs> over, laughs, and goes, <laughs> come here, and he'll also rub your head as well. <laughs> uh, Mavery, oh, there you go, 11, you 11 hit points back, that's not bad. Pretty, pretty average for that, so, cool. All right, Cal, so. Can I say, Cal looks around and goes, does anyone else want, want, want head rubs? Holding up his hand, anyone? Greg's glaring at you. <laughs> Cal looks over and like with his hand up, rubs back his head and goes, "All right, so we're moving on." <laughs> I think we're good to go. So as you guys, um, I'm gonna move you here just so I can copy and paste all these at once. I'll make it easier. Um, as you guys go through the swung open doors into the. Um, into the darkened chamber of the next room, you see that the doors behind you automatically close. And you see that all of the edges um, seem to seal magically. And now it seems to become a room with no exit. As you become accustomed to the light in this room, the air seems to feel very, very heavy and very wet, like you're stepping into a very active mist. And what you hear Um, You hear what sounds like crying coming from high above you. As you look up towards the ceiling, you see a glowing circular opening in the middle of the roof with water pouring through, flowing to the hundreds of sorrowful statuesque faces that cover the ceiling. And those faces seem to be crying. Giant teardrops are falling and splashing heavily onto the ground around you. Um, and can everybody go ahead and make perception checks for me, please? What perception? Perception. Yeah. Finally. Okay. Okay. So, um, Zelana and... Yeah. Ooh, excuse me. It's wet. <laughs> <laughs> um, Zelana and Mavery, as you guys are looking around this room, you see that they're, that inside of these teardrops, as they hit the ground and the water explodes, as teardrops and water droplets do, you notice that there seem to be mushrooms inside of the drops that seem to appear 
a few seconds. So once the water drop hits the ground, the mushroom appears, and then a couple of seconds later, they seem to magically vanish, rather than exploding into a mushroom mess. You also notice that there are some what look to be ramshackle handholds built into the walls of this room. And looking from the ceiling, or from the floor to the ceiling, you see it's easily 80, 85 feet from floor to this um, to this hole in the middle of the ceiling. Um, Callum, as you are looking around, um, kind of following the other two, you see this golden glint on the ground across the room, on the floor. Cal would go look at it closer. Okay. So as you approach, you find covered in dust and like very, very wet, almost a very mud-like substance. As you wipe it off, um, and you expose this golden glint, you see that it is an exquisitely crafted opal shield with emerald edges that has a golden serpent engraved into probably 60% of the shield's surface. And I'm going to go ahead and let everybody see this. You should see it now in your journals. It's called the Shield of Luring. This is also another item I made because it's fun um so you see this um and you are able to it's a plus one shield um using the command word of durham which is latin for acquire you can cast lightning lure as a bonus action um as many times equal to your charisma modifier and you regain all expended charges when you finish a long rest so you can use that as a bonus action and then still take your attack action in the same round Whoa. With as many uses as you have charisma modifier per day. So does this require an attunement slot? Um, this one, I don't believe it does. It does not. It is not an attunement shield. It's effectively okay. a plus one shield with a little extra oomph on it. Um, Vincent, as you're also looking around, you kind of you see where this part of your party is looking, you see this glint over in the corner, but something else kind of catches your eye, a similar glint, not too far from where the shield was. And as you're looking, you see there's actually a corpse in between um, the two glints. One, um, the shield kind of seems to be at the feet of this decomposing, rotted skeletal corpse. And at the other end towards its head, you see on its hand a, um, a silvery glint. Um, and as you clean these off, you notice that these are gauntlets, and if you were to wear these gauntlets, um, you feel that you would gain additional strength. As you put them on, you realize, out of game, they're gauntlets of ogre power. So as you put them on, you feel a surge of strength raging through your body. So you have gauntlets of ogre power is what you have located. <laughs> Vincent Smash. <laughs> and those I those I do believe taken a two minute slot. Um, so, looking around and seeing the <laughs> these mushrooms, it looks like they're in every single teardrop. They magically appear in the center of all these teardrops, and these teardrops are falling at quite a rapid rate from ceiling to floor, as well as these handholds. And the ceiling hole seems to be the only way that you're going to get out of this chamber. What do you wish to do? I, I found one. Sorry, right. go ahead. No, you go ahead. Uh, can I try to identify what type of mushroom it is? Sure. Uh, what would you like types to of mushrooms really fast? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like go a ahead nature and check? Roll a nature or a survival check. Yes. Ooh, let's do survival. Okay. Um. Being a ranger and having spent a lot of um, time outside, you realize that these mushrooms are not really ones that you would eat. They look like giant button mushrooms, but they are red with white spots on them, and they seem to be... They seem to have more give to them than a normal mushroom would, because when they hit the ground, they don't immediately explode. Like I said, they just kind of magically disappear. Okay. 
Well, I'm not going to eat it if it's not one that I would normally eat. <laughs> no, and it's it looks like it's big enough that it's too big to eat. It looks like so these oh, okay. teardrops, these drops that you're seeing, um, they're not small. They're bigger than all of you. Um, about where oh, you wow. see that she's actually inside the teardrops, those are effectively the size of what they are. And the mushrooms oh, okay. are inside of those, and they look like they're big enough to be chairs or like small beds that you could lay on, climb on, sit on, jump on, etc. Um, they are they are not small. They are large. Uh, cool. Zelana's gonna Zelana's gonna kind of raise her hand and look around at everyone until she has everybody's attention. And she goes, I I have an idea, but if you but if you guys can spare ten minutes, I want to make sure my idea is right. Cal looks over. Um after like staring at his shield and just kind of like polishing the front of it and goes, oh, I mean, I'm up for whatever. I trust you. If anything goes wrong, I don't know. I'm sure I'll figure something out. <laughs> She'll look at uh, Talila and uh, Mavery and make sure she gets the okay from them. I don't think we're in a hurry. I'm still looking at mushrooms. Okay. <laughs> Greg is like trying to hop around. Yeah, that and would be okay. Dodge, dodge raindrops. Calyx with mushroom. Oh, mushroom. Is it is it edible? Oh, that's huge. <laughs> ah, oh, okay. So, so uh, um, Zelana is going to take out her wand and slowly start tracing um, runic symbols in the air and make uh, almost a barrier around her. And then when she's finished, she puts her wands away. She puts her hands up on the closest rune and pushes it out. It takes her about 10 minutes to do this, but she casts Detect Magic. Okay. You see that the, um, starting from top to bottom, you see that all of the statuesque faces are magical. Um, you know that they look like they are conjuration magic and that... Um, they don't seem to be inherently good or evil. They just seem to be animated statue faces that are crying. Hmm. Um, and looking at the tears that they're crying, you see that the the water itself seems to be... Um, the water and the mushrooms both seem to be of the transmutation, transmutation school of magic in that... In all reality, these mushrooms should not be able to sit in these tiers like this. Um, the mushrooms themselves are like a combination of both conjuration and transmutation, so they're kind of floating firmly within these um, these giant water droplets, and there is no logical reason that should occur. But the mushrooms themselves seem to be a little bit more magical than the action. They seem to be the most magical things in the room, bar the items on your persons. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, that's what I thought. She'll point up at the um at the faces and she goes, Magical. And then she points to she she like tries to follow one of the giant water droplets with her fingers. She goes, Magical. And then she'll point at all of her <laughs> all of her companions and go, Very magical. But <laughs> <sighs> I think I have an idea. And she's going to take up a uh, Take a deep breath, steady herself, and then take a running leap into one of the water droplets that has not hit the ground yet. Okay. So go ahead and make a athletics or an acrobatics check for me. Oh, I'm good at neither of those. <laughs> Actually, I'm okay at those. <laughs> so as you run and you jump on the first mushroom you get into it and you feel that it has some give and as you feel like it's starting to launch you up you feel that the way that you landed on it was just not necessarily 100 percent correct and you slip off the mushroom and fall to the ground and then the mushroom itself um, explodes in magic but you feel like that is the for what you were trying to do you are on the right path you just didn't quite get it okay she she falls out of the out of the water droplet and uh 
lands on her butt and kind of just, oh, again, gets to her feet. She's like, okay, well, I didn't time it right, but I think what we need to do is we need to jump on the mushrooms, but you have to do it before it hits the ground. Remember, Calma. you also have how handholds in the walls <laughs> that you saw. Oh, yeah. Cal nods his head. All right. So I think coming to the connection with the handholds, I think Zelana would go over, climb up a little bit, and then try to aim herself down at the, at one of the water droplets uh, to try to land on the mushroom in that way. So are you trying to climb up the walls to the ceiling? Because the handholds go all the way up to the ceiling. Or are you trying to jump from the ceiling, from the walls onto the mushrooms and then jump up that way? That, Yeah. I want to try to use it as a springboard because if I felt it spring, then that's that would be my initial thought because I okay. could probably get up higher that way. Okay. Is everybody else doing the same thing or are you trying to get up by a different method? So Zelana did the first method, which didn't work. So is that why you're going to be doing the second method you just said? That's the method she's trying because she felt the the response from the mushroom, but they are very obviously... Uh, handles that you can climb all the way up on the wall but she wants to do this way because she has an obsession with magic which is why she's a wizard cleric <laughs> Cal looks around and um, at the party how tall are Zelana and Mabry? Uh, Zelana is 5'4 Um, I am honestly not sure what I put for her. Sure, how tall tieflings could be? They're like regular human height. Yeah, Justin said people size. <laughs> <laughs> That's good job, Justin. You're not wrong, but also okay. Uh, um, not very helpful. <laughs> not wrong, but not helpful. Well, yes, but actually, no. Dad, <laughs> it feels like that. Not quite helpful. I mean, um, no, I was just gonna say she's like probably like five seven or something, you know. Okay, so Cal's still about as tall as you guys. Uh, Cal would look around and offer, not sure if anybody would need it to be carried. God, she's instantly typing. <laughs> if it shrinks down, has to climb on Callum's back. On Cal's back. Take Emily form. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, he, he can shrink yeah. down into a, a smaller form. Do you climb on um Cal? Okay. So how what's the size of Ellie? Piggyback style? Okay. <laughs> Since um since I'm assuming Ellie is like the size of a child or a very small humanoid. Six year old. Oh, absolutely. Oh, that makes it so easy. Yeah. Cal's used to carrying halflings, so it's like, all right, come on. So, so yeah, you can definitely carry Ellie without any type of disadvantage whatsoever. Because <laughs> she, she probably weighs less than the gear that you carry easily. Definitely. So yeah. like, a, whatever, it's a backpack. So you can make <laughs> all, you can make all your checks. Um, so. The way that this works, anyone who's trying to climb up the wall, there'll be three checks of the wall or three checks of the mushrooms, and you can do athletics or acrobatics checks. If you're going up the wall, the DC is 14, and if you're using the mushrooms, the DC is 15 for either acrobatics or athletics, whatever um, you want to roll. It's just the wall is a little easier because there are handholds there. So the DC is one less. Cal so, looks and... over at the water falling and goes, I do miss the ocean, but I'll take my chances with the wall. Okay, so go ahead and roll three um, checks for athletics or acrobatics, and you just need to get three passes to get up to the I hole. I don't think Cal has ever seen a changeling before, so watching 
what so watching Vincent shrink down to little girls like, all right, come on, man. If he looks like tiny little child, let's go. <laughs> come on, man child. Come with I'm me. Imagine child death cleric. And now trying to make him want to play one. Yeah, this like, looks so confused. Just very childlike. <laughs> Yoda style. Oh, well, yes. Yes. So while well, Kel's climbing up with Vincent on his back, he's going to be asking, so what kind of magic is that? I, I, I want to learn that. I may not have cast it, but I want to learn and see. Okay, so you just make it on that one. You're climbing up and you're getting distracted by conversation that you're having with... Um, oh, with God, Vincent. yeah. <laughs> um, and then, so as you go to climb up, <laughs> your hand slips, and you don't fall back to the ground, but you just don't make it any further up. Okay, you want me to keep rolling? Yeah. And he's like, uh, is that, okay, hang on, I gotta focus. So you fall back to the ground. Great. So now you have to pass three. Um, Zelana, are you climbing up the walls, or are you jumping on the mushrooms? I want to anyway, I want to jump okay. on the mushrooms. Okay, so you go to jump on the mushrooms, and you fall on your butt. <laughs> I'll try one more time. Okay. Nope. She sighs and says, I didn't want to cheat, but I guess I will. And she'll spy she'll cast spider climb on herself. Cal looks over and yep. like, how the what kind of magic is that? So um, she just starts you, climbing up next next to Cal and you, as he <laughs> Go ahead. Do you want to help anybody else up the walls or are you just taking yourself up there? No no no, I'm uh whoever looks like they're struggling the most. So I might follow okay. Mavery first. Okay. Cool. And you can uh, you can definitely help her. And if you're helping anyone to get up the walls, it would drop the DC to ten, and they could do it at advantage because you're helping. Yeah, I would. Um, if everybody stays together in a group, like if everybody goes around me, I'll make a point to help everybody as we go up. If we all go up together, kind of in unison. So what we'll do then is we'll just do two full group collective checks at acrobatics or athletics. And if you have a majority pass both times, you guys will all get up instead of having to roll for the next 15 minutes and hoping that we hit them. That would so... be helpful. <laughs> Guidance you have. <laughs> Are you touching, like, Cal or something with that? Just like, like, I'm, like, sick. You should be able to carry me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. <laughs> all right. So everybody roll... Um, Acrobatics or athletic checks, and we'll do them at advantage since effectively um, you're getting spider climb assistance. And so yeah. everybody just roll it. Yep, yeah, just everybody roll two. And I'm we'll... also I'm tying a rope to Greg, <laughs> trying to lead him up with me. Okay. Do you want me to roll for him as well? Uh, he can just be on yours. Okay. So right now we have um, Callum has passed twice. Mavery has oh, passed no. twice. You get at advantage. So oh, at because, advantage? Yeah, Sorry. because you're getting help from um, from spider climb. So that will pass. So roll Yay. another two. Well, it'll be at advantage, so just another advantage one. Okay. That Yay. passes. All right. And then spider climb. One, two, three. That's all we need because someone's being carried and you're spider climbing. So everybody passes. <laughs> um, Yay! You do notice as you climb closer and closer to this um, this gaping bright light hole in the ceiling that these faces aren't statuesque faces at all. They are real humanoid faces that are gigantic that seem to be sealed into the ceiling and they're actually crying. Those are tears of what looks like pain or sorrow when you hear weeping sounds um, and you can't quite understand what they're saying. Uh, but you do see that coming in the coming into the circle seems to be water from some source that seems to be feeding their tears so that they're basically permanently hydrated and able to continue to cry in sadness. Um, so as you make it up through the hole, you see a forest path between multicolored trees off to one side, a giant jack, dominoes, and other children's toys as well as a giant 70-foot statue um, of a teenage girl. The statue seems to have hands that are pressed against its cheeks, and she also seems to be crying. 
um, following the tier, um, the river that's being created by her tears, you can see that the water is flowing from her tears down through the ceiling hole that you just have climbed from. And you realize that the water that is being cried from these face statues seems to be originating from the eyes of this teenage girl statue. Um, you, looking around, you can see that the statue has what looks to be twisted blue hair and sitting atop it you see there is a table with a pretty beaten up um, teapot sitting on top of it oh you can't that see anything be the teapot yeah are we We're are blinded. we supposed to be in darkness no you shouldn't be but it's so spooky. It's so spooky. I've gone blind. <laughs> it's it's radiating <laughs> magical darkness. Oh, yay! Light. There we go. <laughs> oh, there you go. I didn't put your tokens. Oh, in. hey, there it goes. That's also Ooh. probably why, because I didn't Spoopies. copy your tokens over. So yeah, you guys basically came out of this like hole that's like right here, and you see the tears coming down off of her face, and looking at it, um, anybody who has any type of, actually, roll me history checks real quick. History checks. Bum, 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 so re bum. is a thing that happened, and I don't know much about it. Hey, look at the statue and goes, hey, look, it's crying. <laughs> Talila lives in the moment. <laughs> Cal doesn't pay attention to that stuff. Cal's not the smartest man, but he does his best. <laughs> so, um, you know um, Zelana from... You did a little bit more research about Wonderland than most of the others in your group because you saw this quest and it intrigued you the most, and so you did a little bit more uh, more background study. Um, and you realize that this statue seems to be in the um, the portrait of one Alice, the legendary Alice who seems to have saved Wonderlands once before and now seems to be the commanding general of the um the white army that you know right now is at war with the red army and you don't remember her having hair but also you don't know people change their hair color all the time um and this is a statue it just looks different hmm. and again the statue is 70 feet tall um, and it should be if i'm correct here uh, yeah, from floor to ground, 70 feet tall. And you see that there is a table with a beaten up teapot up top. Uh, okay, I'll be right back. And uh, Zelana's going to go over and just start walking up the side of the statue because Spider Climb is still active. Cal stands there with Vincent on his shoulders and goes, you all right back there? All right, cool, just checking. Let me know if you need anything. So are you climbing you're climbing up the statue slowly but surely? I'm I'm literally walking up it because spider climb is still active because it's active for an hour as long as I maintain concentration. Oop. Okay. So as you all stand at the bottom of this seven at the bottom of the seventy foot statue, which this only seems to be from like her waist up, um, you see you see Zelana get to the top and Solana, when you get to the top of the statue, the ground seems to be shifting underneath of you. Yep. As this blue hair that you're standing on seems to come to life. Um, it's, it sprouts up, flinging you off the top of the statue. Um, as you are falling down off of the statue, it sprouts at least six arms, six legs, a giant glow, blueing eye, blue glowing eye, singular eye. I need you to go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw as it throws you back towards the ground. Eight. So you do not pass. You fail. Um, and you get tossed all the way to the ground down here. And it's going to be 7d6 because you fell 70 feet. Feather fall. Oh, you're gonna, 
cast Feather yeah. Fall. Yeah. I just want to see how much damage you would have taken. Go for it. Oh, that's that's a significant amount of damage. Oh, yeah, I'm, um... I'm a wizard. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. So as you see this creature, who should actually be bigger than this? He should be uh, that big. Um, you see this creature come to life on top of... Um, on top of the statue's head, the hair now no longer seems to be hair. It seems to have twisted into this living being. You see Zelana gets thrown off, and as they're falling to the ground, flailing in the air, swimming, they just kind of turn and snap their fingers, and you see them start floating nice and gently all the way to the ground, and I need everybody to go ahead and roll initiative, please. Yeah. Cal is going to politely ask Vincent if Vincent wants to stay on his back, or go and fight. Oh, Vincent changes back, so I don't. I don't okay. think Vincent is back anymore. Goes. As Cal is asking, just cheers. Like, okay, so we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Instantly heavier. <laughs> I mean, I like to argue that Cal could still carry him. <laughs> Can Cal roll strength to see if he can still carry Vincent? <laughs> still holding on to Vincent? Yeah, sure, go for it. Roll can I roll strength or yeah, athletics? For um, whichever. You can roll athletics. It's a pretty athletic maneuver. And you're a pretty strong person. Having to carry all this. You. Yeah, I mean, if, if Cal they want... feels your ship. Do you want to get down now, or are you good? <laughs> you can stay on his back if you want. <laughs> I wouldn't mind either way. Cal just, just, just had to pull out his gun. You're playing chicken. Okay. You're playing chicken as you just run. <laughs> them on your shoulders. All right, um, Mavery. I want you to first go ahead and roll on the magic wild search table, please. Wee! Now let's see if I remember how to do that. You roll a d100, and then I will tell you what happens. Yeah, it's just to... Oh, okay, so you have a chart? I just use the one from the book, yeah, for the PHP. Okay, yeah, because, I mean, yeah, a D&D Beyond, I can, uh, oh, it's, I, I mean, use that one. I was going to pull it up, but. Yeah, I mean, you no, can that do that works, one. A 59? Because I don't right. remember how to get to it. Yes. Okay, so, on a 59, you, as you, you feel something in the weave kind of take you, and so you give in to the weave, as you're used to doing, being a wild magic sorcerer, you feel yourself get empowered with magic and you regain your one of your lowest level spell slots. <gasps> Rock on. <Yay! laughs> That's but, awesome. Yep. So you still, because you cast that spell earlier, your DC for spell casting is still at a one. Um, that didn't clear that. That was for your, uh, okay. your other ability. So it is your turn though. And then the, okay, the, so, the distance uh, on this is also accurate. So whatever you have your ranges at, this will be accurate to those. Okay. Yes. All right. I gotta gotta do some zooming out on my map here. Um, and let's see how. Okay. That is important to know. Alrighty. Do, 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 do. Do uh, mm -hmm. I would like to cast chromatic orb at the second level. What's the range on chromatic orb? Ninety feet. Uh, you should absolutely, I think, be able to hit it. Oh yeah, you're 55 feet away. You're 55. You're 55 feet away. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right, go ahead and cast chromatic orb. Do and for the damage type, I'm gonna pick lightning. All right. Yes. Uh, I will tell you that a 19 will hit. And. It takes damage. Okay. All right. Beautiful. Well done. It's going to use its reaction. Yay. Because it can see you because you're just on the edge of its reaction range. I need you to go ahead and make an intelligence saving throw of 16 
Uh, I'm gonna use Tides of Chaos so I can roll with advantage. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So as you Jesus, as you throw this lightning orb and it explodes um, at this aberration-looking creature. You feel this immediate, like, mental surge of pain, and it feels like your whole empathic system in your body locks up, and you're going to go ahead and take 13 psychic damage from this just monstrosity oh, no. that sits atop this statue. Thanks. All right. Is that yeah. your turn? Yes, it is. Okay. Talila. Okay. Uh, I'm going to bonus action Hunter's Mark. Okay. And then going to use my fancy new longbow. Awesome. And I'm going to do two attacks with that. Jesus. Hopefully that went twice. Yeah, both of those hit. <laughs> 27 and 28 both hit. Okay. Um, and then, and then on top your... of that, can I use... Oh, no, it's a bonus action, so I yeah. can't. Okay. But That's you can good. roll your 2d6s for your um, Hunter's Mark damage. Oh, right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or did it already do it? No, I don't. Oh, it already did at the top. Yeah. yeah, I don't like those ones I because it okay. just looked weird. So we'll just use this. Okay. Uh, we'll use I rolled this my own. <laughs> right, cool. So that's 25 total damage. That is Yay! a decent chunk of damage. Um, all right. Vincent, it is your turn. Okay. Um, yes, an eight, a nine will miss. That is very true. It will. I can mute that channel for a bit. Too many memes <laughs> distracting me. Too many. Get these memes out of my face. No, except the memes. Except, except the memeology. Like chatting right. in the memes. How um, dare you? Do you want to move anywhere? Are you on your turn? Great. Cool. <laughs> okay. All right. Zalana, you come at this point. You've seen a lightning ball just explode at this hair, twisted hair looking creature above you as you fall very slightly to the ground and land nice and soft like you're on a bed, like a pillow of feathers. Like, huh. It's turn around. Good shot! And then she'll turn back around and whip out her wand and take aim and um, mutter some holy uh, words that she learned uh, during her time of slowly but surely becoming a cleric and cast Guiding Bolt. Um, 19 at will first hit. level. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So that is uh, 18 points. Wow, Jesus. That's 18 points of radiant damage, and the next attack roll against the creature has advantage because of the glowing. Um, it's like a shimmery, um, a shimmery gray, um, light that surrounds it. Okay. I just put a pink dot on it so that I remember what it is. So. This um, this monster that that is atop here crawls down this wall um, at quite the speed. Um, it can climb up and down the thing, and it's got, if I recall, 40 feet of movement. So you see it just take all of its legs and start to shimmy its way down to about here. Um, and it sees the person who it threw off the statue. And it looks you dead in the face. And you hear this voice in your brain. Um, it's almost... Nobody else hears this. It's like it's talking to you specifically in your mind. And you hear it say, Why, why don't you come work for me now? I need you to make... A charisma saving throw of 16, please. Oh, shoot. 
for Zelana. Uh, I... Mm. Mm -hmm. I wanted to save these, but I'd like to expend a luck to try to beat that. Okay. Because I have the lucky feet. Unless you're immune to charm. Mm. I don't believe you are? I don't think so, and I don't think tieflings get advantage No, that's just an elf thing, charmed. but yeah. yeah. You, can use a, you can use a luck point and roll that save again if you so choose. Mm, yeah, I will. I'll try. Yep! Yeah. Okay. 18. So you feel this telepathic link and this... You feel almost this urge to go work for it. And for a minute, you do kind of turn and look at Talila beside you and you go to raise your hand as if to catch him at, to cast a spell at her and Greg. And then all of a sudden you snap back to your senses and you no longer feel like you're being mentally dominated by this being her eyes narrow as she turns back to to the creature and she just looks very very angry okay um and that's gonna be its turn because it can't move anywhere else and it's uh uses action so cal cal would have no idea that the caterpillar tried to charm the lawn, right <laughs> nope it was all um telepathic all so right, Zelana's just... the only one that knew and maybe maybe Talila got kind of scared for a second at the fact that Zelana was about to cast a spell but then just didn't so hmm. all right Cal will um I guess step around over here look at the caterpillar and uh pull out the blunderbuss of justice and <laughs> load it up <laughs> One second, get up my sheets. Load it up and shoot as, as a bonus action and shoot at the caterpillar. Okay. That misses yep. horribly. And I spend yep. my other action loading it up. Okay. So you guys see Cal without this Actually, blunderbuss. She gets to mm -hmm. roll with advantage because of guiding bolt on it. Yeah. That's true. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, try You see... Uh, you see Cal pull out this blunderbuss and yell, FOR JUSTICE! And shoot, and then quickly reload and shoot again. And it just kind of, you see the hair-like body of this being kind of separates and just lets these justice bullets go through it and just ping, ping off the statue and just cause the statue to chip away. Um, Mavery. What would you like to do? Um, some fuckery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, this will be fun. I would like to cast Shatter on this thing. Okay. And its save is what? Um. Uh. Constitution 15 is what it says. Okay. Well, it rolled a four, so it fails the save. <laughs> um, twelve damage. Damn. All right, all right. And that was a first level spell or a second level spell? It was second level. Okay. Um, do you have anything you're going to do as a bonus action or movement? Um. Do do do. do. I don't think there's much I can do bonus action wise. So. Yeah, I think that's going to be it. Okay. Go ahead. And as you, um, as you connect with the weave 
and you utilize it to make this shatter thunder magic appear. Go ahead and roll on the wild search table again against your uh, ability that you utilized. Squee! Roll yourself a d100, and we will see what happens. A 56. 56. <laughs> 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 um, as you get done casting the spell and you all hear this thunderous crack throughout the whole vicinity you look over at Mavery and all of a sudden every hair on Mavery's body falls out oh no you have lost all of your body hair <sighs> head to toe all hair is gone is this permanent? Uh, no, it, comes, it grows back after 24 hours. <laughs> so, for the next day, you are completely bald, top to bottom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Bald. I imagine she would become very sad, like, seeing her long, pretty hair fall out. And she would just be like, huh? And just start sobbing. You hear this laugh inside of your head as the monster mocks you for all of a sudden losing hair since it looks like it's made of hair. It's almost like this monster is absorbing your hair as a wind picks up and kind of blows it towards this aberration. It's like it's taking your hair from you. That so. is so rude. <laughs> Talila. <laughs> okay, Talila sees this and is like, whoa, that's so mean that that guy with his hair is rubbing it in. Okay, um, so... I'm going to do the same thing. I've still got Hunter's Mark, and I'm going to use my longbow. I'm going to put a red dot on for Hunter's Mark, so I don't forget yes, either. Yes. That'll, both of those will hit. Oh, did two of them go through? Uh, yeah, 25 and a Oh, they're there. They're both going to hit. Um, and, and then I still have my bonus action too, right? You absolutely do. So I'm going to use one of those snazzy. So there's the D6s. All right. And then... It'll just be um, your spell save, and I'm pretty... Let me look up what um, uh, Blindness Deafness save is, unless it says in there, which it might. My spell save's a 13 in case. Okay, let me see which um, which stat it is. Um, it is a constitution saving throw. I don't know if I put that in there. Yep, um, it said okay. con save, but it didn't oh. say the DC. Gotcha. Yeah, it's whatever your spell save is. I left it blank because yours will change as you go up um, okay so this thing rolled a 20 total okay so yeah that beats it so, so it is blinded. fine it's not happy but <laughs> it's, um okay vincent um jesus yeah that will hit um is annalise a magical weapon i can't remember Nope. Okay. As Annalise shoots, as you shoot um, Annalise at it, it hits, but it doesn't feel like it's doing as much damage as you're used to Annalise doing. Okay. Uh, roll an extra d8. Go for it. And this will be full damage, because it's necrotic damage. Okay. All right. Do you want to move anywhere, or do you wish to stay there? All right. Zolana. All right. Uh, this is either going to go really good or really bad, guys. So pray for Zolana, but she's pissed, and she's going to do this. She's going to take a step forward, and she's going to uh, look up at the creature and start uh, muttering in Infernal. And I think Mavery may be the only one who understands Infernal, but it's an old, um, it's an old, yes. tief it's an old tiefling, um, uh, kind of horror story, um, about falling in love with somebody who could really hurt you. And she's going to use hypnotic gaze on him and my, uh, saving throw, cause it says creature, it doesn't say humanoid, um, and my DC is a wisdom saving throw of 14. 
So as you speak this story that it doesn't understand the words for, you stare in its giant one eye, and you're used to this taking on some type of incapacitatory, dazed quality to the creature you're staring at. But as you stare at this, it stares right back at you, and it seems that your charm has no effect. It doesn't actually have to understand me, though. It's immune to being charmed. Ah, oh, bummer. Oh. So your charm has no effect. Is that your turn? Let's see. Uh... Yep, because I got rid of one of the few spells that I can do as a bonus action that would allow me to hit, but yeah. Okay. That's the end of my turn. All right. So with you having moved so close to it, it's you're right there in its grasp. So it looks at you, and you feel... You see this big blue hairy creature kind of shrink its body down, and it dives into your mouth. Go ahead and make a charisma saving throw as you feel this monster permeating its way down into your stomach and you feel it crawling on the inside of your body. Mm, since, it's a, since it's an attack roll, I can't use... Um, I couldn't use shield to like deflect it, could I? No, it's a, it's a saving throw for you. It's not an attack roll. Charisma saving throw. So as you, you all see this monster shrink down and you see it jump into Zelana. And Zelana, you feel your you feel this thing growing inside of your body. It kind of feels like it's taking over your nervous system. You feel like it's starting to possess your entire body. You you are perfectly aware of everything that's happening. Um, you are you do not lose any awareness, but you are now completely possessed by this monster. This monster. For mechanics purposes, um, here, I will just actually do this. I will just post what it is so I don't have to read it all out. It does this. Um, it is now inside of Zelana. It cannot be targeted. Your body is now under the control of this being. And it retains all of its... Like It's basically like you have a split personality inside your body at one time. You know it's there, and it knows you're there, but it controls your body. Um, can... I'll... I'll... Do I still get a turn? Because I have an idea of something she might do on her turn. Yes, when it comes to... So that was actually his action. So when it comes to your turn... Whatever you want to try, you can try and do from the inside, but you won't be able to cast, like, outward spells or things, because it can't. You would, if you're doing any spells, there, what is it that you're trying to do, just so we can go from there? What will you be trying to do, should I say? Ooh. Uh, banished creature. Okay. So, it is, and this is what, CR... So I'm not fully trying to banish it, but um, you, I, I can turn it. I can make it leave. Okay. And since so we'll she wears is... it, she doesn't actually have to hold it or present it. Gotcha. So what we can do is, on your turn, we can do that since it won't get a turn before you anyway. So it won't be able to do anything with your body until its turn. Cool. We'll do this on your turn. Cool. So you guys all see this giant hairball monster shrink, go inside of Zelana, and Zelana turns, and Zelana's eyes now have gone. What color are your eyes normally? Uh, black. Just solid black. They have now. They have now gone this diamond blue, and they're the brightest blue you have ever seen. The hair on Zelana's head also goes this blue color, and you kind of see like it's almost like she's being controlled by puppet strings and that's its turn cal it's your turn cal initially grossed out his first thought is to shoot but then he gets this very serious cool look on his face looks at zelana lowers the gun and says zelana trying to pull whatever is uh, the war caterpillar that's inside of Zelana's attention. He yells, Zelana! 
Vomit! <laughs> so, since this thing is inside of Zalana, it will you and it, it retains its stats, it will do a wisdom saving throw using its stats. And its saving throw, I'll roll out in the open, it has a plus 7 to its wisdom saving throw. And it rolls 21. Can I use a lucky to impose disadvantage on that? Absolutely. Because you still are fully aware of what's going on. You can hear things and you can see things. You just have no control of your body. Damn. That that more than beats my DC. It wasn't for... Yeah. So Cal yells that and it doesn't work and Cal gets really frustrated. Because that was an action. Um, hmm. So I have a thought. It's a bonus action. Cal would walk over towards Zalana, gun in hand. If I cast Sanctuary on Zalana, does that mean that the Caterpillar can't control Zalana anymore? No, what that would mean would be that any outside forces that are attacking Zalana, if they chose to do that, would have to meet the Sanctuary requirements. But it's already in and fully possessed her, so... It, it's more of like Sanctuary gives an outward barrier, kind of like shield, um, rather than inside. So this creature would still be inside of Zelana. Hmm. Cal looks over at the party, looks over at Zelana. Doesn't really know what to do, because Cal wouldn't know how to deal with this kind of encounter. And he would say... Don't worry, Zelana. I'll get it out of you. I'm going to load my blunderbuss, and I'm going to shoot Zelana. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's already loaded, so I'm sorry. I don't know what else to do. Cal's not smart, and I can heal you back up. Can you? you can, action yeah. Yeah. I have two actions, though, as a fighter. But are you, are you action alert. surge? Say again? Are you action surging to do it? Because you can't cast an attack and or you can't okay. cast a spell and then attack with the same action. You'd have to I I will I will action surge to try to hit Zelana. Alright. You can absolutely do that. And this is gonna go against Zelana's ADC since this is Zelana's body. So What were you saying, Devin? Oh, I can also do the heals. Yeah, I have fifteen hit points. I have 15 points in my healing pool, and if you could just back me up. Cal's gonna say sorry and tell everyone to attack Zelana uh, and shoot the blunderbuss. Does an 18 hit you? That hits. Alright, I'm gonna make that hit into a smite with 2d6 radiant damage. Oof. So Zelana takes 13 radiant piercing damage. Got Cal's it. really frustrated, and it's just... You can see the, the tense in his gaze as he's just holding the gun and waiting to load it again his next turn. This is okay. one tiefling that doesn't have hellish rebuke or else I'd ask if the um, if the worm would make her use it, but she actually doesn't have hellish rebuke because of the type of tiefling she is. Cal will end his for, turn for there. For purposes, I would use um, this monster's reactions rather than your reactions. Got it, I would okay. For, for like the main actions and bonus actions, they would be whatever you have, but it because its reaction only requires mental capabilities, not physical, so it would use his reaction Got and it. your act bonus actions. So okay, all right, Talila. Did we skip Mavery? Oh wait, I didn't mean to do that. Mavery, it's your turn. Your link. There you go. I think I clicked it twice by accident. Oh. Okay. Um. Jeez. Y'all have never had a fight like this before. Uh, <laughs> so, hold on. Spells. <laughs> Where? Um. So, I was thinking maybe I could try to cast sleep on this thing. I'm you not, be, I'm not you would sure how, like... If you do that, if you cast sleep, so any spells would be effectively, they would be affecting Zelana, unless they go in and can um, 
mm-hmm. go directly to mm-hmm. the mental source of this monster. But if we put her to sleep, then the thing will have to come out, won't it? In order to it, do anything? It only has to come out um, if it's forced out. It ends it oh. by choice, or the body drops to zero hit points. But if Zelana's body is asleep, it cannot take actions with Zelana's body unless it forcibly removes itself do from it. her body. That would do be it. a lot smarter than just shooting her. Hurry, please do that. That's so good. That's it a doesn't good idea. Have to, it doesn't uh... have to remove itself, but it would have the option to do so. But it would be Zelana who would be making the saves against the sleep and the wake-ups. And it can force you to try and make these saves, but if you're asleep, you're asleep. It can't wake you up. So. I don't know why it showed the thing for sleep and the thing. I told it to oh, like just take a spell slot or whatever. Tap the, it, tap the 5D8 button. It was button. supposed to cast it. Just tap okay, the 5D8 button you. on the screen. You're good. 16. How much there HP do you have? Um, after taking a blender bust and a smite to the face, I have 21, so I'd still be awake. Yep, so you see this... Um, You see her eyelids get kind of heavy, but then she snaps wide awake. And as you do this through your frustration, your frustration comes out in the form of the weave. Since you currently have a DC of 6 for your wild magic that is on your spells that you have cast, go ahead and roll a d20. And if you you beat the save, you don't have to roll on the surge table. But if you are 6 or less... Is that including... Is that including sleep that I just cast? Yes, that's including sleep. That made it six. Okay. So just roll a straight d20. Oh, I, oh no! So you failed the DC, which means you now have to roll a d100 again on your wild magic table. So go Let's ahead. Let's hope that your I've hair never, grows back. I've never <laughs> 44. In one, one round. Let's see what happens here. Uh, ba, ba, da, ba, 44. Okay. Uh-oh. Right page. Let's go. What do we got? How do you always get the good ones? <laughs> T Flake. Yeah, she's T-flake more of those I'm really lucky, but when Justin does when Justin does this, he turns into a potted plant. <laughs> so as the like all the way. as the magic of the weave explodes from you, you feel this ability to move like you've not felt before. Um for the next minute you have the ability to teleport up to 20 feet as a bonus action on each of your turns. Nice. And your DC has been reset to zero. (laughs) So, all right. Now it's Talila's turn. Okay. Talila's going to turn to Greg and be like, we need to get the bad thing out. And Greg is going to squawk. And (laughs) so Talila's going to get Greg to headbutt her in the stomach. I'm so sorry. And you can uh, uh, yeah, you can't move Hunter's Mark because it's not dead. So yeah. Is it yeah, can it just stay there? Yes, yeah, it technically uh, on Zelana now. Uh, yeah, sure. We'll say it's on there. Why not? It's inside okay. of you, so I don't see why not. <laughs> so, but this <laughs> is going to be against Zelana's. All the damage and attacks are all against Zelana. So, against her, okay. HP, against their. Um, HP, all that jazz. So go ahead. And so I'm just gonna roll a beak attack for him yeah. then. Okay, that's your bonus action for him to attack. Uh, I or, don't know. How do you do that as so an I attack? Do, or... Are you? Um. So if I have using... two attacks, can I give one to Greg, one to Talila? Yeah. I mean, I normally run it. As the um, the companion will be just the bonus action, and then you would have your full action to do whatever you want. But you can do it as a split action if you want to. Where you can take both attack action, both attacks. Okay. It's up to you. However, because for Beastmaster, that's how it is. I'm not technically Beastmaster, uh, but uh, yeah. Then, then yeah, we'll Greg? split it. We'll do he does he one does? action and you do one action and one attack. Yeah, so you okay. can take one attack after that. I mean, I'm not gonna shoot her point blank with an arrow. <laughs> uh, it's gonna get messy, and I'm really sorry. I'm gonna try to use my short sword to. See if I can get this thing out. I'm so. Does a 10 yeah, hit no. your AC? 10 misses. No. But I'm assuming the 8 <laughs> Good. hits your AC. Yeah, the 18 hits. Okay, so Battlefield you take... surgery, not going well. 
<laughs> All right. Um, and then Vincent, it is your turn. Command. Ooh. Okay. A one word command to a creature you can see. Okay. Throw up. <laughs> We're going to try it again. Go for it. Or vomit. Same. All right. Um, and you're casting that on Zelana, correct? All right. So, Zelana, go ahead and make the save because it's your body. Um. Wisdom, wisdom save. She's, yes. she's good at wisdom saves, guys. No! She is not charisma based. She is a wizard cleric. I know. I know. I'm sorry. It's a good idea. She's <laughs> feeling that this body had this command to do something that this monster doesn't want to happen. Um, it's going to use its reaction, and Vincent, you feel this burning sensation throughout your entire nervous system i need you to go ahead and make a dc 16 intelligence saving throw please uh 16 so that is the exact dc so you will only take half damage and uh, so you take Seven psychic damage as you feel your nervous system burn inside your body, but you kind of shake it off um, and you take seven damage. Is that a person? So, okay. Delana, you have this being inside of your body that is controlling what you do, but you are fully aware of what's happening. You are aware that your friends are attacking you, but there's nothing you can do to stop them consciously. You want to do? So, Zolana wants to uh, reach out to um, to Azuth, I think is how you pronounce it, and that's her um, her patron for her cleric. So she reaches out to Azuth and asks for help in trying to um, get rid of this creature by channeling her divinity. And I'll repost that. Okay, so is it just to turn the creature or is it to banish the creature? Um, I am not a high enough cleric level to, because it's based off your cleric gotcha. level, not your overall level. At least that's my understanding. Yeah, your cleric yeah. level. So I'm, it's not high enough to banish it, banish it, but it would be high enough to try to make it leave her. Okay. And it is a what kind of save? A wisdom saving throw. It only oh. works on elementals, phase, or fiends. So, which is so, funny because it's called Abjur There's Adoration in the Name. So as you, um, as you call upon your deity to help turn this being out of you, to free you from the powers of possession. Um, you focus and you focus and you just, you don't feel that connection to your deity that you're used to feeling when you're casting any type of magic and it has no effect. It is not a, um, a fae, a celestial, or a fiend. Or an elemental. Or an elemental, yeah. Bummer. It is, it is none of those. Okay, so it is its turn. It's inside your body. Um, I don't know what your spell include. <laughs> um, um, unless you... Here, I'll send it to you. Sh okay, that works. And you should theoretically be able to roll off of it as well, because it's from D&D &D Beyond. Uh, so you see, where? you feel this monster kind of like digging its hairy claws deeper and deeper and deeper into your being. Um, and you know that you don't have any control of what's going on. So it's going to... It's going to force you to turn, move here, beside Talila, 
and it's going to force you to cast Inflict Wounds at second level on her. And I will let you, I'll let you roll for it because it comes up in the open for you. It won't do it for me. Okay. Um, so a second level Inflict Wounds against your compatriot. You see it happening. You feel your body reaching out and touching at her, and you feel this necrotic energy go through your body as you unleash 25 necrotic damage on Talila. Can I oh, use my you. last luck point to try to re-roll that 20 and get it lower? You absolutely can. Yeah. Just roll a, just roll a d20 plus, uh, plus 7. Yeah, she's... Yeah, 22. Sorry, That's I... am still gonna hit. I, ch- I tried. There's a lot of, it's a lot of fighting okay. inside as much as she can. Aww. And that's going to be its turn. All right. And it just, you see this evil smirk kind of appear on Zelana's face and the eyes flash back to black just for a second, just long enough so that Zelana can truly see and then emotionally feel the weight of what she's doing uncontrolled by her to her teammates and the eyes flash back to blue and you lose the control and the emotional feeling of what's happening. Callum. Cal looks over at his gun, looks over at Talila, who I presume just got hit very, very hard. Mm-hmm. Very hard. Ouch. Walks up behind Zalana, puts the blunderbuss away, grabs the butcher's cleaver. And you'll get this with a plus two um, to your attack for advantage. I'm happy, but also not. And Cal... <laughs> Holds the butcher's cleaver up with both hands. You just see this giant blade. Cal is holding two-handed. And I'm telling you right now, I get three attacks with this. Okay, you get and all of them with an additional plus two. With a so. plus two, and Cal just looks over at and, and Talila and Greg would see, and Zelana has no idea. Okay, so that's an eleven. That's a nineteen. That hits. And, okay, so one of them hits for uh, 13 damage. He just slashes through the, through the back of you. She's still standing. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to turn it into a smite. Okay. Ten more damage. She falls. And Cal stands over you with just a look of defeat, but hoping that it works. As you see um, Solana falling to the ground, unconscious, you see crawling out of her mouth the monster, and it reappears right beside you. Hunter's mark is still intact because that was um, that was not taken off, but it appears immediately beside you, Callum. And I. Paper- can't cast anything else. Cal just looks at it, pissed as hell. You see it just grow, and it has, like, blood and guts from the inside of her. And you see the light in Solana's eyes fade from blue to black to closed eyes. She falls completely unconscious on the ground. Mavery. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I... Jeez. So do we uh see? So you see this the, monster? The, the it is caterpillar fully... thingy yeah. again. It's fully reappeared right beside Cal, right out of um, the dead, the unconscious body of Zelana. So it's it's right there. Okay. You should be able to see the token. So. Thing. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just wanted to clarify because I think I missed that part. My audio's been cutting oh. in and out. Yeah, as Zelana fell unconscious, it crawled back out of her mouth and reappeared in its full size form beside Zelana and Cal. Okay, I. Yeah, I'm going to try to shoot it with. Magic missile. Okay. At the first level. All right. Yeah. And it only rolled. You rolled two, two more. Three. Yeah. 
All right, ten damage. You see these these magical darts just into it, and they seem to be absorbed into its body, doing the damage. But you don't see them bounce off or come out anywhere. Ooh. Okay. Well. Seat. Okay. All right, Talila. Okay. I saw this ugly, terrible thing climb out of my friend again, and so I'm gonna try to kill it. And uh, let me see. So it's still hunter's marked. I'm gonna try the longbow shot, and I'm going to get it to make that um con save. I'm gonna use that again. Both of those arrows miss. Damn. So okay, your, never mind then. Say, your spell, your <laughs> arrow has to hit for the charge to be utilized, so you don't burn a slot. Running. Okay, can I use movement to kind of put myself in between Zolana and this thing? Yeah, you can do that. Okay, I know it's kind of like not super. Here, we'll do we'll do this, and I'll just say that you're like right. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> for the purposes of where tokens are placed. Um, okay. Okay, Vincent. what magic vincent provides today what we got oh geez oh man okay oh <laughs> white yes um all right it is a con save of yes plus one to con it rolled an 11. Uh, let me make sure yep it takes 30 damage it takes 30 necrotic damage from light <laughs> casting blight with one hand throwing at the bird with another all right and then he moves okay cool all right Solana go ahead and make a death save I don't know if D and D Beyond rolls. Oh, there that button. Three failure. You have one failure. All right. <laughs> this monster, um, not being happy with what's going on, you see it takes two of its six arms and it holds them at the side of his head. Um, to any of those who have gone into battle with Glidden before, you recognize this as a mental ability that is cast. Kind of different, but you realize what's about to happen is going, it's like an, a, a brain attack, basically. And so he looks at both um, Callum and Vincent, who just rocked his world. And I need you both to make DC 16 wisdom saving throws. So Callum fails. Let's see, Vincent. Callum, you're going to take 20 psychic damage, and Vincent's also going to take 20 psychic damage as you just feel this mental burst come into your brain. And it's almost like someone's trying to thrust their mind into yours. And that's going to be its turn. Callum. Cal is frustrated, but he's more worried about Zolana. He's going to turn around. I'm not going to move because I don't want to trigger an attack of opportunity from big guy. And he will he will get the potion and just pour it into her mouth. Okay. So that's 44 plus 4? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good guy, Cal. So does she roll that or do I roll that? You can roll it. So what was it again? It was... 4d4 four, four plus 4. And that will be your action to pour it into her mouth. 10 HP back to Zolana. Oh, thank god. Ooh. 
It's better you, than nothing. You feel your eyes open, breath back into your lungs, and you feel... All, you, you choke this potion down as it's just forced down your throat, so you do not wake up in the best situation. You're real hurt, your body, you can now control it again, though, so you have full awareness of your anatomy and you can do what you need to do, but you're choking on the potion as you're awoken forcibly. <laughs> um, and any bonus actions you want to do on your turn? Or movement? But bonus actions, let me see. Cal just looks down as Alana and just says, you know, I, I don't know, he just says I'm sorry, and he's kind of like rubs the scrub, rubs the top of her head again. Okay. And uh, I don't think I can attack, right. so I think I'll just stand there and ready my rapier and shield. All right. No, Mayri. actually, I'll keep the cleaver out, because I'm pissed. <laughs> okay. Mary, it's your turn. Um, I'm assuming our friend here could use more healing, right? Yes, please. That would be ideal. <laughs> I only heard a lot. All right. Oh, only a lot. Then I um will to cure wounds. I just have to be able to close just to the to cast it. You, you got to go up and touch her. Okay. Well, I still have the the teleporty thing, right? Yeah, you can teleport there. Yeah, you can move that and teleport one. away or teleport however you want. Boop boop. Yes. And then and that's a bonus just kinda, boop. Sweet. There we go. Let's do to do, do do. All right. Step in. Awesome. All right. And do you want to do Yay. anything with? You want to move anywhere? Because you still have your movement. Um. Because that teleports your bonus action, so you still have your full full movement if you want to move anywhere. Just just a little bit. I'm gonna back up a little. Okay. Also lost all of her hair. <laughs> um, all right. I mean, you know, it could have been worse. I, I mean, it. It's not a third level fireball centered on yourself. So there's that. That's exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, because I'm so close Just to this minute. thing, I want to switch to my short sword. Okay. Um, and I'm going to say, it's time for a trim. And... <laughs> Can All try right. to chop the hair. We'll see. Both of those will miss. Damn. I'm not a good hairdresser. <laughs> uh, and I think that's my turn. Because everything else requires me to hit things. And I didn't. Okay. So we're good. <laughs> Vincent, it is your turn. Here, touch. Yes, that will hit just um, for 13. And then you'll add 5 plus your level. What's your level? 8 or 7? 8, so 16 plus 5, 21. So you add 21 to that. Okay. Cool. Alright, this monster is starting to look pretty hurt as its reaction regain health rate um yes you i think that's how the spell is i uh, i'll look it up um bum, 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 bum. you regain hit points equal to half the amount of necrotic damage dealt and it is a concentration spell so you would get a total of 13 plus 21 which is 34 halved 17 17 is how much health you get back um, he, this monster, is going to use its reaction against you since you hit it, and it can only use a reaction when it takes damage. Um, and you need to go ahead and roll a DC 16 intelligence saving throw. Please. Fifteen. So you fail, um, and you take 13 psychic damage, 
and then I need you to roll a constitution saving throw of 10 to see if you can maintain vampiric touch. 19, yeah, you're fine. All right. Do you want to move anywhere? Well, it's not, it doesn't have a reaction anymore, so if you want to move, you can move without the fear of being backhanded with a hairy arm. So feel free to move if you so choose. <laughs> um, okay, okay, Zolana, it is your turn. So Zolana wakes up coughing and hacking and feeling in pain and having like really horrible flashbacks to crap that has happened to her in the past, and she fumbles around inside of her inside of her pockets and finds her wand. And while laying on the ground, she kind of like peeks up from in between. Um, Talila's legs as she sticks her arm out so Talila just sees like her arm with uh it was Zolana's wand coming out the other side and she's going to cast firebolt with a 15 that will miss bummer and then uh she is going to cast uh as a bonus action she's going to cast healing word on herself at level three and whisper survive in infernal and then she's going to get to her feet, but she's not going to move. She's going to stay there. Okay. So, um, it is this monster's turn. Looking at this little tiny hand between the legs, it kind of just lifts all six arms up in the air. Like, what? Um, <laughs> and it takes, it takes two of its arms, puts one on the face of Cal, one on the face of um, Halila, and you both feel this force go into your head. I need you both to... Uh, actually, it's a spell attack, so it's just going to be twice. So, um, the one against Cal is a 24, and the one against um, Talila is a 23 to hit. That hits. Alright. So, Cal takes 10 damage, Talila takes 11, and I need you both to make DC 16 wisdom saving throws. Please. So God. as you as you have these hairy maws on your on your heads, all of a sudden, Cal, you fall prone in the biggest fit of laughter you have had in a very long time. And you don't understand what's so funny. Just this hairy hand on your head and your face just seems to be the funniest thing you've ever seen. So you're currently prone. And Talila, you just look over, not understanding why all of a sudden Cal is laughing in a hysterical fit of laughter on the ground, because you don't I don't, don't understand this way. joke. I really don't. Um, and Cal, it is your turn. You don't have to make the save again or anything. You are just, you're prone in a fit of laughter. And you can, can Cal save if you choose. make a comment real quick? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it looks like a dick with arms! It looks like a dick with arms! And it just touched my face. <laughs> it was like it, it's just so. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to say it. That is fair. It has been said. I didn't even think. I didn't even see that until now. Now that's all I see. It's a six arm chest. It's a six arm chest. Like, just laughing. <laughs> Look at the hair. It's like it's wearing a condom, but it's just covered in hair. Oh my god. It's just a hairy condom dick with little arms. Woo -hoo -hoo. All right. It is your turn now. <laughs> you can get up if you want or do whatever you need to do. Can, can I? So I can't do a wisdom save because I'm laughing at, at the dick caterpillar. You don't need to make a wisdom save. It was just the one thing to knock you prone for the one. So okay. you, can, you can just get up from prone if you so want to. All right. <laughs> what do you want to do? It's your turn. Okay. Okay, so I just, that's all I can do though? I can't no, make a wisdom no, save. You, you, ha you don't need to make a wisdom save. It was only for the one thing, so you're only prone. You're okay. not, like, stuck prone. You can get up. You're effectively just the prone condition. You have no other effects. So you can stand okay. up, and you're not being for... You can choose to stay on the ground laughing and not do anything. That's completely up to you, but you don't have to. So, I I can't attack it, then? No, you have a full turn. You or... just have to use half your movement. Okay, I, I have a full prone. turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Can I look at seven, guys? 
<sighs> I'm going to cut it to pieces. <laughs> And I'm going to use second wind on myself. So what you're saying is, you're going to circumcise this monster. I'm going to circumcise this dick. Talila's like, it's time for a trip. I'm like, no, it's time for a circumcision. And I got to cut a lot off right now. Okay, so 1d10 plus 5 for second wind. That's okay. not bad. Eight is better than nothing. That's true. All right. <laughs> PG-13, yes. I'm going to use my last two movements to walk over to it and count. Not have a laughing fit, just kind of like snickers and goes, hey, hey, big guy, you're a dick. And I'm going to slash at it twice. Okay. So the first one hits. Alright, so I do 9 damage. Your weapon is magic, correct? Yeah. So, yeah okay. That's what I thought. Alright. You do 9 and damage and if you slice hair off this monster. And I'll, I'll end my turn there. Okay. And you just came and slashed it and it's had its turn back and you did damage. It's gonna go ahead and need you to make a DC 16 intelligence saving throw, please. God, okay. Cal's not smart, so this should go well. Ooh, look, you passed. And you only take eight psychic damage. <laughs> so. That's just, I did my second wind entirely. All right, uh, Mavery, it is your turn. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> you have this little bald blue tiefling rich running around. Like, wee, wee, wee. Where's my hair? <laughs> See, she's still sad about the hair, but she's trying to make the most of everything. Um, so I would like to cast a third level chromatic orb on this thing. Okay. And I'm going to choose Acid for my damage tape. Alrighty. Whee! Nice. And it is a 22, which is definitely going to hit it. Alright, and let's double check one thing to make sure it does not have resistance to this monster. You do 22 damage. As you create this green orb in your hands and you throw this acidic magical orb at this hairy beast with multiple arms and multiple legs and one giant glowing eye, you hit it square in the eye and the, and the acid washes down upon the entirety of this being forcibly dissolving him into a pile of just molted matted gross acidically burned hair and this being is no longer alive you have killed it yay and then roll a d20 i just want to see if you fail it again See if it's a DC of four, pure wild <laughs> magic surge. Just a straight to oh wow. Oh my god. Real, real close. <laughs> I would have been five, yeah, because you had the cure wounds. But yeah, so you still pass it barely. Uh, um, but yeah, so you kill um you kill this creature and it dissolves into a pile of just matted gross hair. Cal's gonna slump over and say, Can we take a rest real quick? Lana's Please. gonna fall down on the ground and then stick her hand up in the air and be like, I second that. Kyle's gonna, gonna rub that. Kyle's gonna, th gonna rub the top of Zelana's head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, not feeling good. Avery, after you've killed this and you walk over, kind of out of spite because you feel like it took your hair and you feel like it's its fault that you lost hair, even though in the back of your bald head, you know <laughs> that it's your own fault for the way that you sometimes miscontrol the weave you look down 
into its dissolved body, and you see an emerald dusted ivory and onyx band. And as you clean this off, you see that there is a pearl embedded in the middle of this ring. Um, and this seems to be some sort of magical item that I will tell you it is a pearl of power set in an ivory and onyx band that is emerald dusted. So you can, um, you can basically as an action once per day get up to a third level spell slot back. So. Ooh. Yep. So you can go ahead and add a. Uh, here, I'll just link it so you see what it says directly. Pearl of power. It's this. Bam, bam. Bam. Uh, yes, the highest it can be is third. It's a once, yeah, it's a once per dawn kind of thing. So you guys see um, that Mavery finds this piece of jewelry inside the being you see the tears on this statue actually seem to slow down and as you're sitting there recovering taking a rest um you see that the tears are slowing down to almost a stop and you hear the wailing of the sta of the faces that were um, embedded on the ceiling in the floor beneath you stop crying um and you see now that the there seems to be a magical ladder that has appeared that will climb you up to the teapot, which you know is what you came here came here to get. Do you wish to go and get the teapot? Lana shakes her head. She's like, I no. I, I'm gonna sit right here and she pulls out her she pulls out her book and starts uh going through the pages and does arcane recovery to get two of her spell slots back. Cal as, Yeah, go ahead, sorry. Sorry. As um Zelana, as you're as you're doing this recovery, you hear a voice. And as you look around this is not a voice of anybody in your party. This is not a voice of the thing that possessed you. This is a voice that you've never heard before. You hear it say, every adventure requires a first step. How fine you look when dressed in rage. Your enemies are fortunate that your condition is not permanent. You're lucky too. Black eyes, toot, so few. As you hear this voice, these this voice talking to you in your head, you feel this almost compulsion to turn your head up towards the teapot that's on top of the statue. And you feel the subconscious urge to want to go to it. Do you fight this urge, or do you let this urge take you, and do you go to the teapot? Uh, can I roll a wisdom or insight check on the intentions of the voice in my head to see if I can understand what its intentions are? You can roll a wisdom save at disadvantage because you have no knowledge of where it's coming from from or what it specifically is that's a 19 so with a 19 you don't feel like this voice intends you any harm but it's also to the point where you're not a hundred percent sure mm -hmm. and you still feel this compulsion while it's not like a compulsion to take one to their death or to take one into something um, that would harm them. It's more of like a curiosity that you're feeling, a very, very strong curiosity to take you up to this beaten, older teapot. And did you say that a rope came down from there, or the rope went down into the room where there was a, crying? 
the there seems to have been a magical ladder that has come down out from the top of the head of the statue down to the ground to so the full 70 feet so you could climb up it if you so chose. okay uh after recovering her uh doing her arcane recovery she's gonna close her book and put it back in her bag and say on second thought i'll go get it and she'll start climbing up the ladder as you get to the top of this ladder and you look at this teapot it's bigger than you would imagine it's not it's effectively a two-handed teapot that's very large it's probably three to four feet long about a foot and a half to two feet um, tall and it's very beaten up on the outside but there's a little hole in the lid and again you hear this voice in your head it says I'm not crazy. My reality is simply different from yours. But in the end, we're all mad here. And you feel this compulsion taking your eyes into the hole that is at the lid, and you see a tiny little glinting um, from inside this, this teapot. I will look inside. As you look inside this teapot you see there's a piece of jewelry and as you pull it out and you look at it it seems to be a golden band with a purple very anatomically correct brain on this band and do you put this ring on can i roll an arcana check on the ring first you can 19 as you look at this at this ring you recognize um that it has power enough with which to store a soul inside of it and you imagine that the being that is inside of this ring is what is communicating with you can i try to think back to it you can Hi, I'm Zelana, and I just got possessed by a hair penis worm thing. So, excuse me if I seem a little hesitant, but who are you? I... I'm the one that they call the Hatter. And I've been imprisoned. My soul has been imprisoned in this ring. Um, if you if you wear it, though, I will help protect you until you can free me. And you know from um, your time with magic studies that you know that this is, in fact, a ring of mind shielding. And you know that it can, while it does have its normal magical effects, um, that when wearing it... It can make you immune to creatures that can read your thoughts, determine whether you're lying, your alignment and whatnot. But you also know that it has the capability to store a soul in it. And if you were to die while wearing it, your soul could be stored in there unless it's already occupied. Hmm. So as of right now, you believe that the Hatter's soul is imprisoned in this ring of mind shielding. If I put it on, can can I compu communicate with him telepathically? Yes, you Would can I know communicate. That? Yeah, you can communicate. Well, if you put it on and you attune to it, you can put it on and communicate with the soul that is in the ring. And you can also cause the you can use the ring um, to become invisible until. You take it off, you make yourself visible, or you die. <laughs> so here's the capabilities of the actual ring, if you wanted to, to read them. Sweet. Um, and as you're standing up there, you're up there for 25 to 30 minutes, just kind of staring, almost lost, looking at this ring, communicating telepathically with the Hatter's soul, and you have a conversation back and forth a little bit. And he tells you that he was with Alice when she initially imprisoned the Jabberwocky and his soul was 
sealed away inside this ring so that he could not use his magic to completely destroy the um, the legendary dragon. But once his soul was split from his body, his body was then taken and he does not know what it's being used for, but knows that if his soul is returned, he can in fact come back and return to his rightful place at the side of Alice to go to war and hopefully win that war and save this whole realm. And while this is going on and she's up there communicating with the soul of the Hatter, you guys are down um, at the bottom of the statue, kind of watching this happen um, and realizing that the tunnel, there is still that path between the trees that you can walk and go that way if you wish to uh, to explore further on and see how you can get out of this place. <laughs> Zelana will put on the ring and come back down and has every intention on asking him more questions. Okay. As you come back down um, from the statue, um, he says to you, that's, a, that's enough talk for now. We can, we can talk more at a later date. Um, once you have spent more time and truly understand the power of this ring, I don't want to overpower and destroy your mind too soon. Um, and as he goes silent, um, and you now have the teapot with you fully acquired and in your power, um, you can follow, you follow the path that's in the trees to an opening where as you stare out, you, it's not dark, you have very good line of sight. The land is very war-torn. Um, there are some, fi there's fires off in the distance, there is broken down buildings, just a general dilapidated looking land, but to the west, you see the giant white army led by what you assume is Alice. And off to the east, you see a four to five times larger Queen's Red Army, who you assume is being led by um, by the Queen. And as you listen closely, you hear the roar of a dragon-like creature fighting against something. Um, and you could put two and two together and feel like it is the legendary Jabberwock trying to break the chains with the assistance of uh, many of the guards to try and free to free him to annihilate the, um, the crusaders of the white army um, and as you look at that and you look to the ground you see what looks to be um, an unfinished teleportation circle on the ground And if you wish to use one of your scrolls, you can actually finish the uh, the circle. Guys, what do we want to do? As the scroll. Okay. I I and... have both of them. Oh, okay. okay. As you um... begin to roll these scrolls out into roll one of the scrolls out into the middle of the teleportation circle and read the words that are on it you see that magic juts out from all of these arcane symbols that are on this scroll and they start to fill in the areas that aren't necessarily complete and as you're standing there on top of this broken and self-repairing teleportation circle you start to see a green glow appear around you and once it is completed you are encircled in this green cylindrical form of magic and all of you including greg all six of you um are teleported and you appear boom, right back at the front of the dungeon delvers guild in front of julius who is looking at one of the many watches he has on his left hand the big clock that he has hanging around his neck um he says, "I'm um, I'm I'm glad to see that you've um that you've arrived back safely." His voice is booming because you are still very, 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 very small. It sounds like he is his voice is just covering the whole planet. That's how big he looks in comparison to all of you. Um, and he takes a little plate and has six tiny little cupcakes sitting on it. He says, "These um th these are for you." 
Why, thank you. Julie, that's going to take one for her and one for Greg. Yeah, we'll take a cupcake. <laughs> delicious. Did you make them yourself? Um, um, yes, yes, I did. <laughs> uh, as you, uh, as you eat these cupcakes, you feel all of your muscles starting to expand. You feel the, um, the fibrous connective tissue starting to tear a little bit and then stretch out and then repair itself. And all of a sudden the world shrinks and you all grow and you go back to your normal, um, your normal stature. And as you do this, his voice is no longer booming. It's back to its normal self. Um, he goes, well, um, this is for you. And he hands each of you a bag of gold that has 375 gold in it. And he goes, um, and I, can I, can I, can I take the teapot? Please, please, can I have that? And he reaches out for the, uh, for the teapot with both hands. Um, Zolana will stretch it up um, and give it to him. And as he makes contact with it, she doesn't let go. She stares up at him um, and softly whispers, um, where's Hatter's body? Um, I... I don't know. I've heard, I've I've heard there's a train or something. I, I I don't know. Let me um let me go research. Um, I'm late. I'm very very late for a very important date. Um, no time to say hello goodbye. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. Snatches the teapot from your hand, takes two steps back, and poof, teleports away from you. And that is where we will end. Yay! <laughs> that was really fun. Oh, that was so cool. The teapots. And you now have the soul of the Mad Hatter in your ring of spell of uh, mind shielding. So, and you can choose to free him or find his body or not. Um, that will likely be a future adventure where that will just be the sole purpose of that adventure. That'll probably be one of the last ones in the series. So. You guys can do whatever you want with that, but Sweet. I hope you had fun with it. I certainly had fun making it. And yeah. Super cool. Yes, that thank you. Fun. This was so fun. The fights were very fun, too. Yeah, really smart. It was really original and creepy, and then really funny towards the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I was, as I was, as we were playing through, I was like, well, this started very happy-go-lucky, and then it got real dark, kind of <laughs> fast. And then it got funny again. But yeah. Yeah, no, but, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. And I'd never heard of that monster before, so I decided to use it because it sounded fun. It is called a Hashalak Kiori. Hashalak yeah, Kiori. It's hard to say. But fun fact, that possession, you can do it on a recharge of six and literally can keep possessing different people in the party. So, yeah. That's Yikes. awesome and terrifying. Yeah, but once you're possessed, you can't be possessed again for 24 hours. So, yep. At least you got that going for you. But Still, yeah. yikes. <laughs> uh huh. But yeah, it's it was fun. So I'll probably do the next one in the series probably next month sometime. So I have time to uh, to put it all together, see where I want to go with it. Since there's now a coming war, and you have a soul in your ring. Yes. So. Sign me, Zolana, and Hatter up for it. So, <laughs> Cal's up for it too because he wants to protect Zolana. After 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 willingly knocking her down, he's like, I have to keep her safe. Like that one. That one needs to stay alive. I'm gonna have to homebrew that monster with the Hatter's body because it's real messed up. Oh so, God, that, that's awesome. Wow, that's that would be really good. It's going to take a while to homebrew that thing, but it'll be fun. So I'll probably do between three and four more of these, and then one like capstone one, I think, at the end, depending on how all the other ones go. So we'll see. Yeah, I may even, that's a good idea. I may even see if I want to do at some point a multiple, like two concurrent sessions with two DMs that then run the two parties together into like the final thing, but I don't know how that would work with that 20 sounds, so that. oh that my sounds God. awesome though yeah. so i learned recently um that you can make somebody a co-gm yes yes on, you yeah. can yes you can so you could <laughs> you could do that 
it would be I would just have to figure out how to keep everybody interested in doing things at the same time without it feeling like it's an hour and a half between like one person's turn and all that jazz. So that's definitely something that I want to do at some point. But but yeah, I will probably do the next one in the series probably next month sometime. So. That sounds like a lot of fun. Bye, Quashi. Thanks for Bye, playing. Quashi. I hope your head feels better. Yeah, feel better soon. Alrighty, and with that, um, I'm going to end the recording. So everybody say goodbye to YouTube. Bye, Bye YouTube. YouTube. Bye, YouTube. Bye, YouTube. Ha YouTube. Happy dungeon delving.